Hey guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in, uh, getting everybody up in the booth, and then we'll get rolling. As you can see up top, we have about 34 minutes left in our warm-up session, and then we'll be setting the grid for a 24-minute race. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in tonight and bearing with us. We should be with you in just a few minutes to start our, per, our uh, commentary for the evening. So thanks for tuning in and sticking with us, and uh, just enjoy the sights and sounds of Mazda Raceway, WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca, and we'll be back with you soon. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I am Eric Rude, Everything Bagel of the 24 Hours of Lemons, and uh, thank you guys for joining us for uh, what is the inaugural Lemons I Racing League uh, races. We're at Laguna Seca, and just perfectly timed crash right there. Uh, we're really excited that you're here for the first time as we take lemons from meat space into virtual space, partly because we're stupefyingly bored and worried as you are about the real world and mostly because we have uh, n absolutely no idea what we're doing but hey this is free and you're bored and you're bound to get almost what you paid for um we'll talk a little bit more about what this is as we go but for the moment i wanted to introduce you all to my partners in the broadcasting booth sean yoder from nemesis labs and your play-by-play -play announcer ryan bauer aka the bearded sim racer Hey, good evening, Thanks. everybody. Yep, as I figured that would happen, Sean. Sorry about that. Go right ahead, buddy. Nope, all good, man. I was just going to say thanks for having us out tonight, and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, come on board with you guys and help you get up to speed. I'm so glad we found Ryan, uh, Mr. Bearded Sim Racer, jumped in with both feet and uh, got this stream up and running for you guys. We're going to have an absolute blast with this and bring you as, as much lemony goodness as we possibly can. So, uh Without further ado, here's your producer. Say hi, Ryan. Hey, guys. It's Ryan Bauer here, Bearded Sim Racer. Uh, I'm a producer over at Podium Esports and uh, talked with the guys on Facebook, and they approached me, or they should say they made a post about uh, that Lemons was going racing, and one of my buddies that uh, I know is real into Lemons tagged me, and I just felt compelled to get involved. So I appreciate you guys having me, and I think it's going to be a great show tonight. Uh, all the people out there that are not watching, this is iRacing. Uh, you can join iRacing by going to iRacing.com. Uh, and if you uh, hit up the guys at uh, Nemesis Sim Lab, they'll give you a link to use to sign up. 
and then uh, that will get you guys involved in the process. I think memberships, new memberships are half off right now, so I think it's, uh, I want to say like $11 or something like that to get two months and get started, so that's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, all the cars you're seeing tonight, except for the Jetta and the Mustang, are included as base content, so just a lot of cool features and stuff, and you can check all that out at iRacing.com. And uh, check out, also check out BeardedSimRacer.com. And I want to thank Top Flight Computers for powering tonight's stream. Uh, everything you're seeing tonight and you're hearing tonight is coming to you via Bearded Fury, custom build from Top Flight Computers. So special thanks to them. And uh, thanks to you guys for having me out. It's going to be a blast. Really excited to see that the quality of racing is just about what we would expect uh, uh, if everybody is in a fast car, you know, fast being relative here. But <laughs> there's going to be a lot of laughing. There's going to be a lot of WTFing. Um, it's going to be 62 cars uh, in the race at Laguna Seca with uh, a little bit, <laughs> bit of everything from uh, people who've been doing this for 10, 12 years on iRacing and people who signed up this morning. So. It's going to be a good time. And don't forget, everybody that's driving, if you can hear us right now in the feed, we do have the ability to black flag you. We can bring you in and shame you. And we will. It's it's going to happen. So just don't be that person. Or be that person if you want to get some camera time. It's up to you. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting to uh, just see the group uh, and the mixture we have in experience levels and everything out here tonight. So... Uh, it's going to be nice to see some hard racing, see some, uh, you know, fun, fun being had by all that are involved. And, uh, again, just to get it to tune in and get that escape from reality and, uh, get to see some racing. So, uh, I know that, uh, we'll all be excited when things get back to normal and we can go, you know, see the real world content come back and everything for that, as far as that's concerned goes. But, uh, in the meantime, we can get into iRacing and into simulation and, uh, have fun and have our fellowship. So, uh, it's just going to be exciting, guys, to see. I'm, I can't wait for the start to see 62 cars take <laughs> off down into the Andretti hairpin. That's going to be insanity. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to be a rolling start, as I understand it. You know, the few attempts we've had with half the cars to do a rolling start have been uh, in, interesting, probably the word to use. Um, so, so with double the number and cars of all manner of speeds and capabilities, uh, it's 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 going to be a show uh, in chat right now. We're asking if the Mustang ran off to the bathroom. I don't see any Mustangs in the field, so I'm not sure what happened there. And uh, is the pit lane speed limit enforced? Yes, it's enforced in iRacing. It, you, you're going to have to obey that or not and get a black flag and come in and serve it. I want to go out a limb, on a limb and say since there's I haven't seen any Jettas either so far there are some jettas oh there are some jettas good i've been i've been up in the top flight computers blimp oh let's get down closer to the track and get it and get a good look here as we see a couple mx5s going at oh. it oh yeah <laughs> maybe there are jettas maybe jet there might not be any jettas there's a jetta right there there's a rainbow colored <laughs> jetta just going through uh turn four and headed to the kink now yeah he's just went off the track so we'll uh See if we can identify who that is. <laughs> That's okay, going to so, be a thing. Yeah, it's so a the, VW uh, lawnmower. Yes. Already a VW lawnmower. So here perfect. we go. We found, we found it's actually got a nice 24 Hours of Lemons logo on the hood. That's a Warren Van Nuss. Uh, thanks, Warren, for the uh, love on the on the ride there. That's the quality piece you've got there out there with the uh, bright pink roof. If you guys get a chance to check that out, he's going through the corkscrew right now. Yeah, Warren Van Nuss races with uh, Hong North, who are uh, multiple time winners in Meat Space Lemon. So uh, there's a bit of a bit of everything. There's several race winners in this and several uh, other drivers, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, the varying levels of experience are just it's just going to create nothing but excitement, in my opinion. And uh, if you guys are tuning in for for a good set of laughs and uh, then you're definitely in the right place. And if you've tuned in to uh, for anything other than that, I apologize in advance because there's going to be a lot of laughing going on tonight and just uh, a lot of good times had by all. So uh, th shout out to everybody in chat for tuning in tonight. And, uh, you know, we're getting it pumped here about 25 more minutes. We'll get the grid set up. So uh, we'll just kind of take you around and show you some of the different drivers, the different cars that we see out there tonight. Uh, I think there's going to be some really cool cars in the field tonight. So um, I see that my uh, custom paint downloader is going crazy. So that's a good sign getting all these custom paints in for you guys to check out on the stream. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. If anybody has any questions in the chat, feel free to post them up. We'll uh, try to do, do our best to answer them. 
And uh, if, if you know anybody out there that might be into this, please hit that share button and get, spread the word and uh, let everybody know about what we're doing over here. And we plan to do this every week, guys. So if you want to get involved again, uh, you can check out. There was a, um, I don't know if you can pin the post. I'll, I'll go ahead and post it in chat again. But there's a link to get involved in this league. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. And uh, if not, if nothing else, you can tune in every week and watch it here on the, the 24 Hours of Lemons Facebook page. Also on the YouTube channel, and also over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash bearded sim racer. So uh, thanks again, guys, for tuning in and watching. And uh, the corkscrew, I, I just can't wait to see. the. Uh, I'm sorry, the the uh, appropriately named Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. So we'll keep that in, in mind tonight, guys, and uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, calamity to put on display for everybody. I just wanted to keep on going with with places you could watch. We're on Discovery, the History Channel, the like, just... <laughs> We're covering the entire cable spectrum. It's it's beautiful. Um, and we did have someone in chat, I, I forget who it was, that predicted Jetta TDI dominance. And as soon as they projected, predicted Jetta TDI dominance, Warren Van Noose dropped a spot on the overall time sheet. So it's not looking good for dominance, but we, we shall see. Yeah, I see a street stock out there. That ex Actually, two street stocks out there. That really excites me. It looks like they're P1 and P2 on the board, guys. We'll give a shout down here of uh, look at who it is here. It's Mr. Matthew Gain and Shane Cochran in the two street stocks. They've got a little uh, tiny Miata behind them. That's pretty cute to see that. So, well, that's actually one of those is actually a Jetta. My mistake. Uh, there are two street stocks down here in the Andretti hairpin, though. We've got the camera. There are cars rolling at the bridge on the front stretch. Excellent. There were literally just cars rolling at the bridge on the front stretch. <laughs> it was chaos. Uh, I don't even know how you do that before you go up the hill on the front stretch. Oh, just he's got tumbling. He almost hit the bridge. There is a Mustang out there in the corkscrew. He's blinking, but there is a Mustang out there. Hopefully the connection issues will uh, line themselves out. As, uh, it does make for difficult viewing as far as a uh, uh, production standpoint goes, but there is a Shell Mustang out there. That's the number two of Matthew Dysonoski. Is that correct? I hope. I don't know. Sorry, Matthew, if I'm butchering your name, but uh, we'll see if he can do Oh, I found another Mustang, the uh, 31 of Norman King. It's got a bright green 28 spray painted on the door. It's a... Uh, Classy, I like to see that. Very lemony yeah. appearance on that Mustang. The uh, the street stock, I think, is really what we're going for as far as Lemon's appearance goes. You know, the street stock being like a 78 Camaro. That's kind of pinnacle Lemon's as far as these things go. So uh, I, I love seeing the paint schemes that pay homage to that. You know, uh, Daniel Knight has a nice rusty looking uh, uh, third gen or second gen. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, we get a good look at those schemes now that you're talking about. I appreciate you bringing that up. David Carpenter has a bright orange one that looks like his uh, normal Lemons car, which is a uh, Toyota Cressida. Uh, so, so I like seeing the the racers modeling their uh, their real crap cans, also. But absolutely, man, the Camaro just looks so right uh, <laughs> for for anything Lemons. Absolutely, yeah, the number seven forty six uh, street stock got a really cool looking camouflage livery. And as I'm talking about him. Punts a Miata off track going down into turn one. Very uh, beautiful. Awesome. Very <laughs> beautiful, beautiful oh, move. Man. <laughs> That's uh, Joey Dominguez, who in real Lemons races like a 76 Buick Skylark. That's so great. <laughs> yeah. It looks a lot like that car, actually. So oh, my. Was, again, excellent. Yep. I love excellent to see tie ins. Yeah, I was going to say, if anybody out there, uh, you know, is running short on ideas for a paint scheme uh, to run in this series, just uh, check out all the other YouTube, all the other videos on this here, on, on this here, here on the YouTube channel, on the 24 Hours of Lemons YouTube channel, you get an idea of just some different uh, inspiration on uh, schemes in that too. And uh, I know personally, like the, the last interaction I've had with Lemons was the, uh, um, it came up for some reason again in my videos again, the, the whole thing where, where Nitro Circus came and ran uh, the big, the big, uh, uh, the big cop car and that was just so fun to see that and uh, you know my buddy has actually uh, recently got himself a, a car that he plans on building up here out in North Carolina to get ready to do it next time you guys are in the area too so it's exciting to get involved uh, virtually and hopefully uh, in the real world too and you, maybe you guys can tell more people about how they can get involved in the 24 hours of lemon absolutely uh, go to 24hourselemons.com there is a uh, a page on the the upper ribbon that just says wtf that is our faqs page <laughs> Perfect. it'll get you every it'll get you all the basics and then uh the registration systems 
pretty intuitive. There's a schedule. You can go see the races that we're going to be running later this year. Obviously, we're on a, a bit of a furlough or hiatus, however you want to describe it, uh, with the real racing. Uh, hence, we're doing this. You know, we'd all much rather be uh, at a real racetrack this weekend. But uh, this, is, this is the best we can do. And uh, we wanted to give everybody the chance to uh, get in a virtual race car if they can't get in a, a real one to suck. And this way, it's also way more public. And I think there's there's a certain appeal to that. Absolutely. There's going to be a lot of uh, uh, exposure, both positive and uh, lemony tonight, for sure. So uh, for shame in advance on each and every one of you, because I'm sure all of you are going to be guilty tonight of something that we'll be able to uh, shame you on. So keep it up, everybody. And it looks like a, if this warm up session is any indicator. We're going to be in for some really exciting race tonight. With that, Lots uh, of punning. And also, I'd like to give a shout out to Daniel Knight. Just uh, put it on top of the leaderboard right now with a 137, 169, and his uh, his Tiger King liveried Camaro. So we knew it was going to happen. We just didn't know who was going to do it. But Daniel Knight, congratulations. Yeah, we get a good look at that livery here from the uh, from on top of the <laughs> roof, the the roof cam shot there. It's a uh, Actually, it's very nice in appearance. Uh, I, I think that may, they may have went a little bit of beyond the budget on the paint job, though, guys. We might have to dock them for that immediately. I like the grass. The grass around the bottom of the car <laughs> really sets it off. As we see a rain, rainbow Miata check a Jetta out in the corkscrew, the little guy, just uh, David and Goliath there. David won in that case, guys. That was NHL quality checking. That yes. was hit check. Yes. The, the grand irony here is that... It, and then he runs off. Yeah. In uh, in real lemons, you know, contact is verboten, whereas, you know, there there's some means of, of penalizing that. And we'll get into that later uh, during the race. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like the excitement's going to come from the guy who's dive bombing from Nevada uh, during this race. He's coming in from Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, my God. That's oh, man. So great. Um, oh. Sean, why don't you run down the classes in the cars? Because I think that's that's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, you know, we have a limited ability in iRacing racing to put real lemony stuff in, but uh, I think this is a pretty good mix. It's a great mix. I mean, the the street stock first and foremost. Uh, as soon as you guys approached uh, us with the idea of, of being able to get involved in this, the first thing out of my mouth, I think, was you have to run the street stock. There's no way around that. Um, like you said earlier, it is the most lemony of the bunch, without a doubt. Um, I think coming in number two on the on the lemony scale, for me, it has to be the Jetta. I don't know what you guys think, but there's something about it being a TDI and being it is an older car. You know, it's it's a mid 2000s car. Um, it's something that you could possibly see at a lemons event. I don't know. Have you had any TDI? I, you had to have had TDI show up for events, Eric. I've had a few. Um usually they're like the real early tdis and usually they're really bad so yeah <laughs> really, really bad like mark one tdis um yeah i just i i like the jetta i i come from a volkswagen background i've I raced a bunch of volkswagens over the years and they make me happy they make me smile so I, it's cool to see a bunch of them out here and then um we have a couple varieties of the car that you just flat out, you never see them on a racetrack. You know, I, I, you never see Miatas being raced and I don't understand it because I hear they're fairly decent cars. How, how often do you see a Miata show up at a lemons event? Like never, never. almost, almost as rare as a BMW. Almost. So both are, both are on the okay. do not bring list as far as I'm concerned. So anybody that does yeah. it is yeah. just doing it to stir something up because it, those cars are track built cars. And the whole point of lemons is to run cars that were not ever designed to be on a racetrack. And that's part of the fun. We have a Our, lemons world episode coming up soon where we oh, talk as about we see a pit maneuver, the Miata dumping a Mustang in the final <laughs> corner. That is, that is fantastic. Well worth the four X there guys. Did the Mustang end up in the grandstand? Yeah, I'm just worried about that. I'm worried about like <laughs> the, digital people not ever being able to go to their digital homes. Shout out! Shout out to Blake Field. He says it's uh, digital racing, just all zeros. <laughs> Blake Field, a uh, classic lemons racer, one of Excellent. these snarkier people in lemons, which is saying something. Absolutely. 
as I was saying, uh, yeah, th this whole notion of us hating BMWs isn't, we don't hate BMWs. They're just boring. And we like when people take the hard way towards things. So if you want to bring a BMW or a Miata to a real lemons race, you know, you can you just, you're not, unless you're going to like turn it into a, a waste management truck, um, <laughs> which has happened. Um, you know, you, you, we're just not going to care that much about it. So, you, it, so what you're crazy. saying is there, there's a truck that brings the dumpster to the party and that's where the dumpster fire comes from. Absolutely. Uh, I think they ran uh, as dumpster fire racing for a race or two, which, you know. That's yeah. fantastic. Nemesis Lab is actually going to bring a BMW to Lemons again here in the next year or so, but it's an E21, so does it really count? Great bad cars. <laughs> I, I, 1.8 yeah. liters of, of lifter ticking fury is yes. all that car is. It's, oh my God. To answer your earlier question, I think the second lemoniest car here is the Solstice, uh, which was, you know, GM's attempt to build a Miata out of, you know, parts bin garbage, basically, uh, with doors that don't fit, and it weighs another 900 pounds. So, uh, you know, I think the Solstice is uh, fittingly lemons, and we've had a couple in lemons already, you know. They're, they're a 15-year-old car at this point, so... Uh, so I think that that's fairly faithful, you know, classic uh, mid 2000s GM build quality applies, which is not terribly far away from a uh, late 70s GM build quality of the Camaro. So uh, uh, we have the a, thing uh, about the Solstice that really blows my mind is I actually had back in the way back in the day, showing my age, I had a Chevette and the Solstice somehow retained the same interior quality of my <laughs> Chevette. It, it's literally a, it's like a literal the, time capsule inside the Chevette. The plastic yeah. door panels, the plastic door panels in both of those cars somehow turn to fuzz. And you can literally just take your fingers and just scrape plastic off the it's it's the weirdest thing. Like I it's I don't understand how you can find material of that low a quality to put inside a vehicle. To answer your question, double D double J seventy seven on Twitch. This is live. Uh, you can also find it over on the twenty four hours of Lemons YouTube page, their Facebook page as well, and just here on Bearded Sim Racer because we uh, we ran out of time to set up a Twitch account. So uh, thanks to Bearded Sim Racer for Productions for letting us use their Twitch tonight, and uh, everything uh, I think is going really well so far, guys. We have a wood grain sighting, a wood grain sighting on the thirty three of Randy Bish. If you guys get a chance to check that out. Uh, a nice looking piece there. Speaking of our number two lemony style car out there, at least on the ranking system, the Solstice. It's got a, quite a bit of a, looks like a spilled some paint on the way to the store and some wood grain and then maybe even a little Nemesis green in there. So uh, that might be something can, you're interested in. I can, I can explain green. that. Uh, so Randy races a Ford Pinto wagon with wood paneling on it and uh, the flames uh, has a flame job, but the flames start at the rear of the Pinto. As ah, is ah, customary with the homage, uh, homage. <laughs> yes, yes, the Pinto's famous fire problems. So. Okay, that's amazing. He actually has the reverse flames on the solstice tonight. I, Good job, Randy. Very much appreciated, Randy. Uh, also, in the last testing race, ran the uh, Holland Oats uh, TDI for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, this, it was my favorite logo on the track. It looked like Quaker Oats. It just it was done so well. Randy, you're the man. About 10 minutes, I think, to race time, 12 minutes. Yeah, 11, like uh, just a little over 11 minutes on the countdown timer, and then we'll have a two-minute grid period, and we'll get them racked up and stacked up, and then we'll roll out for a pace lap and a very exciting rolling start. Uh, we'll be set up to cover all the action tonight, guys. And again, I want to thank all of you guys and gals. Thank you all for tuning in out there, and uh, appreciate all the support. And uh, like I said, if there's anybody you think might be interested in, that, in this, please hit that like and that share button and help us spread the word. And uh, we're just trying to... Uh, Make everybody feel normal tonight, and uh, what a better way than to get some 24 hours of lemons action out there on the track as we see the uh, good-looking bright orange and black Mustang out there going through the Andretti hairpin. So a lot of cool cars out there tonight, guys, and uh, just a lot of different things to talk about, and uh, that's even without racing going on. So we just add that to the mix, and I think it's going to be a great show. Love the oversell of exciting and racing and lemons all being in the same sentence that's well, that's my favorite part. well you know if you guys if, if anyone in the audience out there even you gentlemen up here in the booth with me have seen any of the bottom split coverage that they do on twitch uh they do like a bottom split night in america 
I want to say uh, one of the Coke series drivers, Blake Reynolds, is involved in the commentary on that. And uh, I, I know I've tuned in and seen that. And, you know, even the talent level, it just doesn't, does it seems to go out the window. It doesn't matter. I mean, everybody gets in, on the track, puts their helmets on, you know, gets fired up and everything for the race. And you really see, uh, you know, what, what can happen. And then sometimes the, the, the higher skill level guys is, is a worse race than the lower skill levels just because of uh, egos and stuff that get involved. So. Uh, I think the group of guys we we groups of guys and gals that we have out here tonight uh, be more of a humble situation, which will lead to better racing. So uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited. So that's 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 not an upsell. I'm I'm legit excited. I I mean sarcasms sarcasms part and parcel here. Um, no. I didn't want to mention that. Uh, I know, right? It's just so hard to believe uh, <laughs> that uh, a couple weeks ago when we kind of kicked this thing off from a half-baked idea, we did not expect the response that we've gotten. So um, there's 62 yourself. slots open for the race. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah wasn't, I, I wasn't surprised. Fred, uh, Fred and I tried to tell you <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> we knew it was coming, man. Hey, this um, is I think we're, this is just the tip of the iceberg, Eric. It's, it's awesome to see everybody in the chat room, everybody on the track, everybody that's that's watching and sharing all over the place, man. That's this, this was expected to a certain extent by a couple of us. And we finally got the rest of y'all on board and you're, you're seeing what's possible. And this is epic. <laughs> it's just epic. Shout out to Vect Rexer on Twitch. Uh, that's what I was going for. So that's a huge compliment. He says bearded some racers. Twitch definitely has a lemon Z feel to it. So I, it makes my heart feel warm to hear you start to see you say that. So appreciate the support. Uh, judge phil in the chat which is excellent to see uh we're hoping to get judge phil into the uh into the broadcast booth for next week uh, fantastic I think, I think that's a treat that everybody needs to and we, uh, we do have the piece of. yeah we do have the ability uh thanks to zoom that we can do screen shares and stuff too and even people that don't have iRacing can get involved with our commentary so uh you know anyone in that uh, is involved with lemons that may be watching that may want to get involved i think hit up eric and sean they'll be able to tell you uh, what all we can do to get it to get you involved so keep that in mind you don't have to have iRacing to be involved in this and it's just a lot of fun and uh man just we'll go through and look at some of these cars this this 34 machine i'm getting a really good look at it finally and that's a let me get to get that back on the screen for you guys as soon as i say it i click on the wrong car a lot of good looking machines out there tonight john b cox is that you oh yeah it's got the what is it the nyan cat is that is that what that is the number 34 Looking yeah for it. it's the camaro with the the nyan or cyan it's the one he's got the cat on it that uh there we ferrari go. sued dead mouse for okay there we go yep going down yeah. through just down through the corkscrew now headed down toward the pit entry Gonna go so that's that. an homage to uh neon car which was a bmw 5 series with speakers that blasted neon <laughs> for the duration of the entire race at about 120 decibels kudos to john here he's playing nice with all the miatas he could have totally just drove through right through all four all three of the miatas as you see the 53 gets sideways in uh how do you you can't punt the my little pony miata <laughs> you can't do that you can't be that person well, they, you they have do, to be nice. And the, they do match the out there. The cat's body is a pop tart. I never noticed the cat. The cat's body looks like my breakfast. <laughs> and if you haven't had the strawberry milkshake pop tarts, oh my god, be fat like me. Get them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. I had to. I'm sorry, but that is a that is a great looking machine, and I am a fan of strawberry pop tarts. I haven't had the milkshake ones, but I, I can oh, only, I can only oh. imagine. <laughs> Are you are you fat now? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, then you're gonna be fatter. <laughs> even better, even better. Come more, with me on more, this journey. More love, more love. <laughs> All the processed yep. foods belong to us. <clears throat> love that the the logo is applicable to all, to all of us. <laughs> We can all we find relate. a way to make it fit. Do you, you know who would have thought street stocks on a road course would be so amazing to watch? You know, he's really this. Uh, John's really throwing this thing sideways as we go on board with him, and uh, you can really get an, uh, a good idea. We'll, we'll throw it to the gyro for the corkscrew here. There you go, a little washing machine effect for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Leroy Jenkins yeah, Memorial. Are they running yes. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins? It's Leroy. the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew um, presented by Corkscrew Vineyards of Napa. <laughs> auto parts. Yes, Napa. auto parts. Auto, auto parts. Oh, uh, I can't. I can't stop looking at the cat now. 
I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> we're still on. on the cat. We're still on board with John, so you might as well. Again, this is the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Um, 2.2 miles, 11 turns. Uh, track temp of 131 degrees, so shout out to whoever set the session up. It's going to be hot and slidey and slick and greasy, and uh, that's definitely going to lead to some excitement, even if we didn't have a, a 62 car field, guys, to bring to you tonight. So, and look at our weather today. It's a, a wonderful, beautiful 74 degrees here in Laguna Seca, California, and uh, so I think it's Salinas, California, yep. and uh, it's going to be great to see what happens out here, and uh, as we get down to it, a little under five minutes, we'll get everything set up for the grid there and uh everybody if you need to use the bathroom and get something to drink now's the time to do it because you don't want to miss the start of this event so let's make sure yeah. that we say weather tech raceway laguna seca as often as possible just to see whether we get a cease and desist or they actually say hey we'd like to sponsor you well it's you funny. know either way it, it is a li was raced in lemons before that's a true Come story there, i'm sorry i cut you off say that again David McNeil, who owns WeatherTech, has raced in lemons before. That is a, that is a shout true Shout out story. to him. Uh, I love my floor mats, so that makes that's that even even uh, gels with me even more now. So I appreciate that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, sure we could get David and Cooper to come out and have some fun. Oh come yeah, on. let's have a good time. Randy Pope uh, drove with them in a Crown Vic in, at my very first race in 2010. Wow. We we're actually interviewing Popes tomorrow on our podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm wow. Perfect time. Uh, we see another uh, a good looking, another uh, Miata that looks like to look to have, looks to have some type of uh, pastel type livery on it. The number 15. If you guys get a chance to check that one out, Nathaniel Adler. Oh, he's got like an anime look on there. That's pretty cool. Is that the Hitsune Miku one? It is. It is. I was going to yeah. ask what that is. I'm not familiar. As we see a Mustang. Oh, here we go. We got. Two street stocks. So we'll Somebody's going to get the boot here. Coming through the last corner towards the start finish line now. We'll get a good, good look at that from the uh, from the blimp. We've got the battle heating up here as we're getting down towards the end of uh, warm up. Three minutes to go. Someone in chat Before just told someone to, to stop it. drinking, and I would like to say that that is just the wrong way to go. You know, drinking and driving is, is in general is a bad is a bad idea. You know, and uh, oh, there we get another another look at a good looking uh, street stock there, the number eighty six. That that looks looks great. But uh, sim racing and drive or drinking is a, is just a, a all around terrible idea. <laughs> but I'm sure unless you're of us at out here Mall, tonight, because the the Maison is a really easy place to just grab a beverage. It's yeah, great. yeah. The, I have a a, a buddy that uh, he tries to do the 24 hours of Le Mans solo every year. That's definitely the only place you could maybe try and do that. Uh, I know taking a lot of breaks, it might be possible. But I don't, I don't know that that track is so stressful. From a, well, those we see a oh. Someone in the chat just said, in before your waifu is fat, or, or what was, I, I missed all of it. They're going, they're going off on the, uh, on the anime car. Oh no, uh, yeah, that's my bad. Yeah. I, my, 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 yes. my younger brother would be mad too that I don't know what's on that car, but you know, that's okay. Hitsune Miku is like a, I don't know what you call it. It's like an avatar that plays music. Oh, is like it one of those three? Yeah, yeah, it's one yeah. of those 3D deals, yeah. Nice. She could have a concert with uh, Tupac. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, the team <laughs> that runs that car are like a bunch of lawyers and IT guys from Dallas. So it's just this total, uh, you know, does not compute kind of thing, which is hilarious. They've gone a different direction from their typical image is <laughs> exactly. what you're trying to say. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. So It's uh, a good-looking car, man. Whoever did the livery is spot on man like they they did a hell of a job painting that thing up oh there's a miata i want to try and figure out which one it is it's getting ready to go by the start finish line next to that mustang uh it's got like a black and a green look to it that looks pretty cool i'm never gonna find it of course now because i want to there's just so many cars out here tonight we get back to the anime machine of nathaniel adler the number 15 it's a lot of here we go i think this isn't the exact same oh look there's a look at the number 28 it's got, uh, it looks to be in your colors there, Sean, the green. You know what they say about green race cars. They're awesome in every way, and everyone should paint a little bit of green on their car. That's what they say. <laughs> Absolutely. I like, I like the uh, launching over the curb. That was a nice move right there. Yes, yes. Coming into the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew here, the number 22, uh, Christopher Patterson's P1 in his class right now. 
uh, we will visually or I should say verbally keep you guys posted on class leaders and stuff like that with uh, this many cars out here the timing and scoring is a uh, is not happy about who's in what class, so we'll keep that we'll keep that posted for you guys. We'll get that worked out for next week. Uh, I want to uh, point out uh, my former editor at Hooniverse um, and an auto journalist, Jeff Glucker, is the absolute slowest car out there. <laughs> it checks out. It checks out. I know he can do burnouts. Um, is he drifting so, uh, the whole course? Because that's what he's supposed to um, be doing, right? He's yeah. supposed to just be sideways the whole course. It's like the. All right, I'm going to restart timing and scoring for everybody. I had a feeling that was going to happen. The iRacing did an update today, so thanks to that, uh, every time the session changes, the, the timing and scoring crashes. So you'll see the momentary loss of overlay, ladies and gentlemen, but it uh, won't be too long until we get that back up and going for you. As we're getting ready to grid here, uh, with assuming this many cars involved in the pace lap, we're looking at least two minutes before they get rolling off of the uh, actual grid. Actually, down to 30 seconds now, so... I'm okay with that, and uh, guys, if you want to, if we can now, let's see here, we're almost there, get ready to go over our starting lineup, uh, we'll just do it, if you guys want to do it 10 at a time, get you guys want to get ready, we'll start, we'll, we'll roll through that, because, uh, got a lot of names to cover tonight, and I don't, it might even be, uh, futile to even try and get through them, but in Lemon's fashion, we will do our best. All right. I'll kick off the top 10. Looks like Christopher Patterson starts on pole. This is all randomly pulled, by the way. Uh, also, Pat Mulry, David Bryan, Donald Gearhart, Mario Korf, Jacob Brown, Richard Young, J.P. Murray, Tiernan Armstrong, Ingram, and Jonathan Lyons are the top 10 off the grid. I am 90% sure I'm looking at this backwards. Where are you at? You're at Jonathan Lyons. I'm trying to find him in my rundown, and I am not finding him in my rundown at all. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to keep on going. I, mine is completely wrong. But well, you're 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 right. good. We we do have the full rolling pace lap here before we get started. And uh, in uh, typical lemons fashion, last minute technology issues. So I appreciate you guys bearing with us here. We're working on that. We're gonna do a, another attempt here with the scoring. If that doesn't work, I have a backup plan I'm ready. So uh, the guys are uh, the guys and gals are out there rolling around the track uh, under behind the pace car. We're gonna get ready for a rolling start here. Looks like this time we're good. All right. Excellent. Oh, I know what the problem was. It was trying to estimate how many laps it's going to be. We don't even care about that, do we? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we just abandon the notion of reading the grid with 62 yeah, well, that, cars. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that, yeah, I was going to say that's, that's, a, that's a good idea. We would like to give a shout out to Top Flight Computers. Uh, remember to use the, code prom, uh, the promo code TFCRB1 to save off your custom build. Again, Top Flight Computers for custom iRacing computers. Uh, workstations and water cooling solutions. Check them out at topflightpc.com. Again, the stream tonight is provided and powered by Top Flight Computers. For uh, as we uh, get the pace lap with crashing through yes. the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew, I want to <laughs> read a few thank yous. Uh, Pat Mulry and Matt Murphy from Tarp Racing came up with this idea um, and have helped laid out the groundwork for it. Nathan Schlevine from Priority Fails came on early, helped us figure out a lot of nuts and bolts. Andrew Benna has been kind of a jack of all trades. Obviously, Sean and Fred at Nemesis Labs have been fantastic, made this possible. Ryan Bauer is voluntarily subjecting himself to this broadcast. Apologies to him. Stephen Cavalieri is Lemon's art guy who came up with the awesome logos that are probably one of my favorite things that have ever happened. Uh, Judge Phil put in some hard work. Uh, taking his bribe stencils digital so people can put them on their cars. And of course, the Lemon staff, Jay Lamb, Nick, and Nick Pond, and Lisa Sims, who have kind of picked up my day to day BS while I work on this. Uh, you'll likely hear more from them and from Judge Phil uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, the racers who have elected to subject themselves, themselves to public ridicule, thank you. And most importantly, the people who can't be here because they're working their asses off in essential jobs, keeping us safe and keeping us going. We know a lot of Lemons racers in there. Thank you guys so much. All right, as we're underway, we see the, the cars heading down into turn one and two, and uh, the broadcaster's curse on the broadcaster tonight as timing and scoring has <laughs> crashed again. It should be back here shortly. Nothing else will be able to call all the action for you. I just would like you to be able to see where your favorite driver is running on the screen and uh, keep that in mind, too. But uh, it looks like we've got, uh, I believe that's Matt. No, it's not Matt Larson. He's in the second group. The first In the first group, uh, looks like that is, uh, is that Christopher Patterson out front? Yep. Uh, no, that's a mean <laughs> I'll let you guys, I'll uh, wait for them to come around because there's just so many things happening on the timing and scoring screen. We'll just wait till the end of this lap and we'll have an idea of what's going on. But uh, as far as where everybody started, 
Yeah, Christopher Patterson is leading the way here. We see him going through uh, through turn four and up to the kink now. Out front. Okay, I feel better now. I was trying to figure out what in the world was going on and who was where and what, and now I'm uh, I'm fixated on Christopher Patton's car, Pat Patterson's car, and I'm trying to figure out what in the world is going on with that livery. It looks like uh, it's the it's moon. The, oh, it's Mystery Science Theater. It's the moon. It's Mystery yeah. Science yeah. Theater. Yes. Congratulations, Christopher. So good. That's, That's so many. That good makes me happy. Is, yeah. I, th everything happening here is great. Um, on board the right hand drive Miata for this class. And he is gone. He's checked out. Oh, like, yeah. Lap one, see ya. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm guessing he's uh, quite the that? experienced eye racer. NC. Yep. Yeah, he's checked out in an NC. I, I figured we were going to see some uh, some street stocks up there at the front, but nope, Give not time. right now. Give it time. Yeah, so worth covering the classes, which we started in reverse order with C, the slow class. That is an NC Miata and the Pontiac Solstice racing in that class. Uh, class B is, uh, I believe it's the Global MX-5 Cup car and the Jetta TDI. And then Class A, the fast class, is the Mustang FR500S. The class leader, Chris Chrome, just going off and losing the lead as I say that. Uh, and he's in a, stock, he's in a hornet's the nest there, coming into the last corner. Sorry, I'll let, we're sorry already you seeing off. some. <laughs> we're already seeing some class mixing now. I, I was just watching uh, Matt Larson, the number five hundred one car in Class B, in his awesome Empire Stormtrooper liveried Miata. Um, he is now getting basically. He just got bished. How's yes. that? He got bished by a Jetta. <laughs> We'll get a good look at his uh, 501. Yeah, that is a good looking uh, the Imperial Stormtrooper scheme there. As we see, he's in the middle of a hornet's nest. A lot of a lot of different stuff going on around him here, and uh, I don't think there will have a dull moment even on this two mile raceway. Eleven turns. There's bound to be some type of action in every corner at every moment of this race, guys. So a little over 20 yeah. minutes to go. Again, a look at your top five: uh, Chris Patterson, David Bryan, Richard Young, the second, Tierman Armstrong Ingram. We have a three namer, ladies and gentlemen, in the top five. And the running in fifth is actually right here, this Jetta number 11 of Warren Van Nuss, another three-namer, mixing it up towards the front. No surprise there. Uh, go to Matt Larson story. Uh, Matt Larson won a race with an Acura Integra in Colorado. He lives in Nebraska. Through that and his MR2 in the trailer, headed home. They're all Star Wars themed. The MR2 had a giant TIE fighter on the back. Got about halfway home and noticed that his trailer was pouring smoke out the back. Turns out the MR2's wiring had caught fire as he parked it in there and just toasted the car. Wow. And the front half of the Integra that he'd won the race with brought it back with all the char marks still on the Integra. Races it just like that. Ooh, contact! Oh, punting with, a, with solstice, the solstice for good measure. Yeah, punted Solstice. Uh, heavy right front damage for Matt there. Uh, wow. <laughs> of course, we're on board with him when that happened. Yeah. Uh, what's the, uh, what's the fast by, uh, repair situation tonight, guys? Uh, do these guys have a backup car in the trailer if they need one? No idea. I do know that driving was brought to you by Great Value Brand Coffee. Great Value Brand Coffee compared to Folgers. <laughs> Where did you... Okay. And on that why note... Not? Why not? <laughs> why not? As long, as long as we're doing stupid things. <laughs> I do like the... Uh, was Is the... Uh, the Tiernan... Was it Tiernan Armstrong Ingram? Is that who... Uh, who got into Larson? In the, in the Solstice? It was a different Solstice. It was a different, was a different Solstice. solstice. Yeah, okay. Tiernan's doing well, though, uh, up to P4 in class. I just like Tiernan's car. That it, I like the fact that it's just a generic race car. Yes. It's just white with race car on it. It makes Bar me codes. happy. Barcodes. Barcodes. Oil, gas, tires. It's like a shopping list. Uh, Oil, know. gas, tires. Beer. Yes. Race car. Impressive. Where Impressive. Do, like, what shelf are the race cars kept on? Like, compared to the, the beer large, and the the cereal very, and everything. The very large ones that uh, you have to have someone with a key let you in to check out. So uh, They're just... They're in the parking lot. They've got this row of white cars with yes. race car stamp they're on the low, side. They're low key. Oh, there's a there's a, a sweet looking Jetta going through the last corner there. See if we can figure out who that was. 
Oh, got some in pit lane. That's definitely not who that is. A lot of damaged vehicles we see in the pit lane, guys. Uh, hate to see that. And we'll uh, it, uh, on the YouTube stream saying there's a backup car in a Nazi junkyard, which is a reference to uh, a car that had to uh, get a transmission from a junkyard uh, that was run by an actual Nazi. Wow. Strange thing what? happened at Lemons <laughs> Racing. Wow. It was just a Craigslist ad. They showed up at the house and, you know, oh, the best there's of a guy Craig, standing there Craigslist. watching. Yeah. There we go. Yep. We'll get a good yep. look at the yeah. we'll end up in strange places during Lemons weekends. The uh, the the good looking Jetta that I was trying to get an idea of who it was is actually the thirteen of Matt Mur Matt Murphy. Actually, guys, is a very colorful yeah. machine here. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's, he might have exceed the budget there on his vehicle choice. Those you know it does have all all fenders on it, all lights and all lenses appear to be there too. So. We may have to haze him a little bit, uh, especially with how well he's running up to P4 in class now. So, Oh, uh, he's got yeah. more than $500 worth of wrap on that car. Yep, absolutely. It, is, it, is, it does look great, though. I, I will give him some uh, a shout-out for that. As you see him going through the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. Again, uh, <laughs> par partnered with uh, Corkscrew Vineyards of Napa Auto Parts. So thank you to them for sponsoring the uh, Calamity Corner tonight. Again, the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. Yeah, Christopher Peterson, someone in the chat just pointed this out. Christopher Peterson um, just basically checking out right now 11 point. Well, that just dropped down. He was 11.4 seconds up over Warren Van Nuss, but that just dropped to 10.9. So Warren's on a charge. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Like, how many laps do we have left in this contest? There's a guys? solstice in the wall, also. So last uh, lap, Warren Van Nuss in overall running in second overall, he was almost five seconds faster than Chris. So uh, that gap is down, down to nine point six seconds, guys. Uh, I think uh, Warren was stuck in a lot of traffic, and now we're really going to see that uh, the upper classes start catching up with these lower class guys that have had clean track this whole time. Good class A race as they're slicing through the field. Uh, they're about two car lengths apart and up from 55th and 51st into the top 10 <laughs> in 10 minutes. Daniel Knight and John B. Cox getting it done in the uh, in the street stock. Uh, Daniel Knight running that Tiger King car. What is it? Water? No. Greater Winwood, Winwood Exotic Animal Park. Yeah, there we got that. Yeah. And then we've got the... Uh, We've got the cat car behind him and John B. Cox, yeah. and they're, they're, yeah, they're rolling. This charge through the field brought to you by Carol F. and Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> and Dead Mouse. And Dead Mouse, yep. Let's see if that helps out yeah, our yeah. blinking car situation a little bit. That's uh, anyone watching at home that uh, may, may have a, a condition of involving flashing things. I apologize. It, uh, so many cars out here tonight. Uh, there we go. That's starting to normalize now. Good times. Wow, we've got a couple of them out there on the feed that are just uh, yep. They're in and out of the matrix, right and left. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. We're gonna fix this now. Let's see if that helps. Welcome to the glitch, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Welcome to the glitch. Absolutely. Wow. Here we go. It's starting to level out now. There we go. All right. Good deal. A lot of people using the internet right now. Doesn't well. As soon as I say that. Let you do a scenic view while we uh, figure out what on earth is going on. Good times. I mean, Lemons is going to break eye racing. Just well, I mean, you know, kinda... we we talked about that. It was a real possibility of that happening. It looks like things have normaled out now uh, quite a bit. Starting to see some more. Let's change the one more thing. We just got a a class based uh, racing reference, and then a Bernie dropped out of the race. <laughs> like tied together type yeah that's that's how very lemons of you <laughs> all right we see here john pickering in the number 20 he's running p9 in his class uh still a little bit of matrixy going on guys uh man i thought we were out of the woods fiat, uh, this is a fiat x19 voluntarily in real life that, that is <laughs> wow. he races the doorstop Still a good race at the, with the pair of street stocks in Class A. Yeah, watching them carve up through the field, man, that's that's pretty impressive. They, they didn't have a whole lot of time to get it done, and they've come from a long way back. I, I say that, and then there's a Miata 
getting crazy in front of John Cox. I think John missed him. Yep, John missed him, lives to fight another day. That was a fairly impressive uh, save-your-ass maneuver there, John. <clears throat> there we go. I figured that might help a little bit. Hopefully uh, that takes care of the problems that we were having, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you sticking with us and being patient with all the uh, Neos in and out of the Matrix there. Well, as soon as I say that, they start doing it again. So let's pick back up with Christopher Patterson. No, he's still blinking, too. Okay. Looks like John B. Cox is, looks pretty solid, so we'll stick with John for now. We're down to, oh, as we see a pit maneuver with the Jetta and a hip check. John trying to recover off of the Whoa. track. Yeah, oh yeah. Looks that like was he's more than get, a moment. Looks like he's able to get rolling again as we see the Kitty Pop-Tart Rainbow livery. I didn't see enough of that to know. Did, was he trying to get by the Jetta on the outside, or, or was the Jetta actually trying to make a pass? There's... The Jetta actually does have pace. If you know what you're doing, that car is not slow. At, yeah, we take a look at the instant replay. A double apex corner there at the Andretti hairpin. Uh, we saw John try to stick it up the inside. It looked like the Jetta may have been apexing the corner. And uh, two racers going for one piece of real estate, in my opinion, there. Take it back to live now. Reality, they both suck. There goes uh, the lead, by the way. The uh, Warren Van Nuss just passing the lead. In the rainy curve, I believe that's called. There we go. Yep, we see on board with Warren in the number 11. We were talking about how much faster he was the last lap again, a full five seconds faster than Chris Patterson, our early leader. So uh, he's going to be taking over the top position here. This time with the stripe, we're down to 11 and a half minutes to go, guys. Uh, I think it's been a lot calmer than I expected. As I see Calamity down here into turn one, one car going off and hitting the tire barriers at at least 100 miles an hour. That looked uh, like a scary situation. Hopefully everybody's okay. We'll get the safety uh, team down there to check out what's going on. And uh, It'll buff. It'll yeah. buff. It's fine. <laughs> Hopefully a backup car really on the trailer for some of these guys. Yeah. I am talking about this when I was talking to him about it. You know, like the whole... Uh, whole concept of wow we can hold races without worrying about dudes hella killing themselves on accident right. in their in their janky heaps you know so it's kind of a nice uh, nice change of pace for that absolutely <laughs> i just I'm, I'm at a loss of words watching some of these cars blink in and out while we're uh, we're trying to get get down here a little over 10 minutes to go um i, I it's just a good time i think for just a, a little bit of relaxation music guys too while we uh deal with all the trippy wow that's 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 insane. If you're gonna put some relaxation music on, go to. Are you are you on Warren Van Nuss right now? Because it's a TDI. It doesn't make any noise. Right. It won't get over top of the music. And there are people in the chat complaining that the TDI is leading overall. So let's rub it in. Okay. Well, you know, we could black flag him, guys, if uh, if that would appease the chat. Oh God, no, no. Let, let him just <laughs> let him keep going. Let's just make the chat mad. <laughs> Ten four on that. Who the, the hell? Who the that. hell would it race?
Um, again, apologize to anyone that uh, may have a medical condition involved in blinking lights. There's a lot going on right now on the screen, so I apologize for that. We'll get those issues rectified before we come back for our second race. But again, Warren Van Nuss leading the way. Um, last lap, though, Daniel Knight in that street stock, guys. Four seconds faster, so he's down to a seven-second gap. We'll see if uh, Daniel can get it done as we have eight minutes to go. Yeah, this is crazy. I, I'm looking at the, the Class A action right now. Daniel Knight all the way up to second now. I uh, can't remember where it started, but it was back in the 50th or so position. Fifth. And uh, John B. Cox was right on his tail a couple laps ago, but he's faded. And now we have Shane Cochran in the number 86 machine, another street stock Camaro, that is doing his best to, uh, to run down Daniel, and he's doing a really decent job of it right now. Last lap, both drivers in the 139 mark. Uh, looks like Shane made up almost half a second. He is. Looks like he's about 14, or excuse me, uh, yeah, about uh, 13 seconds behind Daniel. So I don't know if uh, if he keeps it up at that pace, if he'll have enough time. But uh, this track is pretty narrow, and uh, with all the cars out there, it only takes one mistake to wash away uh, any kind of advantage you may have on the clock. Yeah, and we've seen a couple of people in chat commenting on the uh, the glitching right now, and I just, honestly, it's it's not something that any of the racers are, are more than likely experiencing. No. It's because of what we're doing with the stream here that it's that it's doing that. It's it's not something that most of you would see if you're inside the car at all. No, no, this um, is a spectator it, yeah. issue since we're spectating this session. Uh, um, I think that's what's going on, but we'll have that again. We'll have that rectified momentarily. Actually, you know what we're gonna do. Let's roll a, a quick ad, and whenever we come back from that, we'll have the issues rectified, guys. So, again, I want to apologize for that. and appreciate you guys staying with us, and uh, uh, we'll be right back, guys. Thanks. I think we only have three minutes left in this race, though. I see six you wanna, minutes. You want to roll six, that now? Or? Six minutes on my on my clock. Okay. I've got a lapse time at 21 and some change, so I'd, I'd – okay. I mean that's fine. We can wait. Yeah, that's that is the elapsed time, but that includes that includes the the grid and the pace lap and all that too. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so it, it'll be. We can wait until now. It looks like it's kind of stabilized. Of course, as soon as I was going to mess with it, but as we see a pit stop here from Shane Cochran, he was running in the fourth position. Not sure if he's got uh, fuel. I'm guessing he's needing fuel, guys. Uh, I, we didn't talk anything about strategy just because there was so much going on, but uh, wouldn't surprise me if there was a. Uh, some type of a strategy go play going on here at least going to have to come and get fuel so we'll keep an eye on that and see uh what's going on with that so there was fuel who knew these things i don't know these things i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> why there's even make, you can even change tires eric know. it's crazy like yeah. that well that never happens in lemons either you show up on your douglas extra tracks from walmart um, and and you go race the car. I don't, I don't know what these people are talking about. Here comes a pass for the lead, by the way, coming out of the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. Let's see if we can pick that up. I mentioned that the prize everybody's racing for here is a roll of toilet paper that I will mail directly to your house at the end of the season. So that, is that way, priceless, if you wins, priceless trophy. There's. I don't want to mail things many times, so end of the season you'll get many rolls of toilet paper. Should There's going to be something on them. that toilet paper too, correct? Uh, in Sharpie, and I'm looking at the Class C winner. It says Class C winner, Lemon's Eye Racing Race number two. So not a generic indelible marker in Sharpie. Sharpie. That's yeah. how much. That's how much everyone's loved. The toilet paper is even like grooved two ply, so we're not talking the industrial gas station level of teepee here. This is this is the real stuff. Is it quilted northern? We can't talk Charmin. about uh, brand names. We it can because may be maybe maybe they want to sponsor us. Look, you got to throw it out there and just see. You never All know. I can it. is it's a great value. <laughs> there, there we do have a change for the lead again as we see Daniel Knight has gotten around Warren Van Nuss for the top position. Uh, as we see a Jetta going off the track right in front of the leader. We'll uh, keep an eye on this battle here for the top position. Uh, we see uh, just kind of a quick rundown through our top ten here. Uh, Daniel Knight leading the way, Warren Van Nuss in second. Elias Roman, the second, or number two, I should say, running third. David Carpenter up to the fourth position. Uh, let's take a look through a look through these cars. Here's a look at David Carpenter's number 27, Cheaties Street Stock. Adam Furla 
In the 21, running in the fifth position, Christopher Patterson, our early leader, with the uh, the moon livery on his piece there, running in sixth position. Joey Dominguez in the camo, looks like Trump on the hood there, uh, running in seventh. Jeremy Mazzario in the Mustang with the one looks like the 187 livery. I see some chalk it lines. Is literally a chalk outline and blood on the Mustang. That's fantastic. <laughs> you see the My Little Pony, little, My Little Pony 57 oh of David Swig in the ninth position. Uh, the number two, there's the the Mustang I was talking about earlier. That is the uh, number two of Matthew Dysonoski. We see Matt Murphy in the the first Jetta that we've come across, other than uh, Warren Van Noss. He's in the eleventh position. Jonathan Samuel in the in the 935 orange Mustang here. Matthew Gain in a good looking street stock gets sideways going through. Uh, looks like going through going through the kink up here down down towards the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. We'll go on board and give you guys an idea of what the gyro cam looks like. I think it's like 60 feet in elevation change uh, right there in just that one little quick left right there in the court in the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew, guys. Uh, it's uh, kind of like I'm riding a roller coaster in this. Well, as we see, there's contact. Amazing recovery. You, you can hear it there. Uh, it looks like somebody got into him. Uh, a, a amazing recovery. I think it was that Mustang, but it uh, looks like he's able to roll away. Get down to it here, guys. Uh, just a few minutes left to go in this race. And again, back at the front, Daniel Knight leading the way. He's got a 2.7. No one rolls away from contact with a Mustang. I mean, you, you don't do that. <laughs> you that don't walk. Happen. I don't think you walk away no. either if you're at a, at a car show. Oh, well, or Actually, contact with a Mustang, you may end up rolling away <laughs> for the rest of your life. Ouch. Too dark? No, that's definitely, definitely a possibility. All right. As we have... Minute and a half to go in the session, guys. Again, Daniel Knight leading the way. Uh, never, doesn't seem to be a dull moment for him as he's constantly been in traffic this whole time. Getting down to it. I think we will have... Uh, I think he's going to be getting the white flag this time, guys. We'll have to see, but I'm pretty sure we're down to right at a minute to go. This should be the white flag for Daniel leading the way. He has about a six-second advantage over Warren Van Nuss now, so uh, I think... Uh, Patience has paid off, and uh, maybe some uh, good decisions for Dan Daniels. He's is leading the way, guys. Yeah, it's cool to see. We've got Camaro, TDI, uh, Miata, basically one, two, three right now. So it's kind of cool to see that the different makes can actually run up front the way they run. And I think the way that the the race was started was absolutely perfect. And what Daniel Knight's done to get to where he is, and and now he's five plus seconds up on second place. That's a hell of a drive, Daniel. <laughs> heck of a drive. The Daniel Camaro is what that is. As our leader's having some connection issues, guys, uh, he blinked out there for a second. Looks like he's back. His lead is down to 5.2 seconds. As I think this is going to be the uh, last lap for our many of our drivers that took the white flag last lap. Again, we're following Daniel Knight as he's working his way now down into the final two corners. We'll have to see if he gets the checkered flag this time. We have elapsed. Yep, this is going to be the checkered flag here, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner, the 53 of Daniel Knight. Bringing it home in the ice, celebrating as he goes down the straightaway. The 53 Tiger King machine, the street stock of Daniel Knight. Your winner tonight, guys. What a great performance for Daniel. Was he celebrating or did he, did he almost loop it? I think he was I celebrating because he, he, he has been pretty he? sideways. Yeah, we see coming home in second is going to be Warren Van Nuss in that Jetta. Uh, Elias Roman in the Miata is going to come home behind him in the third position. So, again, like you talked about, three different makes at the front. As we see, it looks like two team cars finishing side by side there. And here we see another street stock bringing it home. In the and rally the, fart Miatas. Oh, a Miata. God bless dude. them as well. Chuck and a Jetta in the last turn. Oh, as they door each other with a similar fashion to what we saw with the Porsche and the Corvette uh, back here with the IMSA race a few years ago. Uh, there we go. Finishing in the fifth position, Adam Fer Faria. Joey Dominguez avoiding a Mustang on the straightaway. Going to be bringing it home P6. Uh, we see Jonathan Samuel trying to get turned around on the straightaway. He was running in the seventh position. It looks like he lost. Yep, there we go. The number He's 20. Highly recommended. Yep. Yep. Looks like the losing spots there. And we see the... Uh, rest of the drivers bring it at home finishing up the race here we'll try to get you the rundown of the finishing order once everyone finishes 
Did My Little Pony finish in the top 10 or were they just outside the top 10? Because no matter how you look at it, that's an impressive run for the My Little Pony car. Uh, it looks like David finished in the 11th position in the My Little Pony machine. So uh, impressive run for David. Yep, finished in 11th as we see quite a bit of left front damage on the number 57 machine. So did a nice job to recover and bring that home. Uh, did a nice job. I hate to say nice job again, but uh, it, it looks like it paid off for him. So it was a nice job. Exactly. Everybody survived the first Lemons race in yes, they racing. Did. Yes, that? they did. Yes, they did. You got three rolls of TP to send out to Daniel Knight, Warren Van Nuss, and Chris Patterson. So good job to you guys, I think, is what that means. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A trophy. <laughs> that trophy's a trophy. Absolutely. There were, a favorite, a couple, there, there were a couple one? digital deaths. There, there were a couple <laughs> digital deaths, if, if we're going to be really honest about it. Here, get this to How cooperate. About that? Okay, about that? and now Which your and you now your results. We see Daniel Knight coming home in P one. Let's get some uh, get some tunes going. Coming home second was Warren Van Nuss in the number eleven. Elias Roman the number two and third. Fourth was David Carpenter. Fifth to Adam Furla. Joey Dominguez in the seven forty six bringing her home sixth. Matthew Gain in that number seventy five machine comes home seventh. Matthew Dysonowski comes home eighth. Ninth to Jeremy Mazzari I have to I have to hit talk to you, Jeremy, and get figure out how to get your name right. And the tenth would be Jonathan Samuel. And let's see if we can get a hold of Daniel Knight and speak with him, as it looks like he's going to be available for an interview. Let's get him down here while we go through the rest of your. So many people in this chat, it's ridiculous to try and drag somebody down. <laughs> David Swiggin in a 11th, Matt Murphy 12th, Matt Morris 13. There we go. Well, AJ in chat said that was the most exciting thing he's seen all day. We're sorry, AJ. We're really, really sorry. <laughs> uh, we're being now joined by our winner, Daniel Knight. Daniel, congratulations. Uh, you're the first winner in the first Lemons, 24 Hours of Lemons iRacing League race, man. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. I feel like I shouldn't press my luck and I should just quit now. <laughs> You're done forever. Your whole life, right? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I'm honestly surprised I made it through it that cleanly. So what was it, what was it like out there? Uh, I know starting more in the back of the field and just working your way through all that madness. I mean, uh, I mean, there was probably, I mean, actually, I'll let you tell us. Uh, was there ever a moment where you weren't constantly worried about what was going to be around the next next turn? Nope. Yeah, not a single moment, <laughs> um, especially with the way this track is, you know, come over a corkscrew and there's a lot of blind corners and stuff where you can't see what's coming up. And my spotter would say, hey, there's a car stops in the middle of the track. And I'm thinking, well, this is it. It's a guy with spotters. Uh, Jeez. Look at wow. That. That's, well, that's I'm high a, tech. A built -in spotter. I'm not that high tech. Okay. I don't have okay. friends that want to do that for me. <laughs> So he, said, he says that, but he literally has like six friends that join <laughs> spotters and they're stationed around the track strategically. And he's got Bill Riley working strategy mm -hmm. back in the pits for him. And yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> See if we can get a look at your at your machine there, Daniel. Yeah. There we go. Your fi number fifty three. Uh, we, yeah. we were talking about it being the uh, Tiger King Street Stock out there, man. And uh, I like those wheels you have going there too. Good match to that with delivery. Yeah, if you're going to go all in, you might as well go all the way down to the wheels, too. Any right, well, choice words yes. for uh, Carol Baskin? Well, I think my license plate says it all. <laughs> Considering we can't see your license plate, tell the world. Cause well, I there's, can't. There's, a, there's a look at it. It's an Oklahoma plate, and it says Baskin sucks. There oh, it is. There you go. There you go. There Details. You go. Yep, it's very. that's very important. We'll get a good look at it for everybody here at home. There you go, guys. Love that big spoiler that you bolted on the back of that street stock. It really matches with the tall grass. Very well done. Oh, everyone knows that's an extra 50 horsepower right there. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, well, congratulations, Daniel. And uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank for making your victory possible tonight? I'd like to thank the good people at the Greater Winwood Tiger and uh, Exotic Animal Sanctuary. That was the inspiration. That's all I needed. Just go fast. Fantastic. All right. Well, we thank you for taking the time to join us in the booth, Daniel, and uh, uh, looking forward to race number two. Appreciate it, guys. Awesome. All right. Good. Well, we appreciate you joining us. And again, that was our winner tonight, Mr. Daniel Knight. Congratulations on your victory, sir. And uh, we'll see how you can do in race number two. 
Thanks. Carol Baskin sucks. That's awesome. All right. I think we've got Warren Van Nuss, our second place finisher tonight. Warren, are you with us up here in the booth? Warren, do you have a copy? It's the guys in there. He keeps leaving, so I guess he's not interested. See if we can get uh, he's, oh. he's just he's all about the racing. He That's didn't okay. want to talk to us. That's okay. I'm just looking to he's, see if there's anybody else in the, from the top five that we can chat with. I don't see Elias. See if David Carpenter is Warren's in the zone. He doesn't want us to mess up his groove. That's okay. That's okay. All right, well, we won't worry. We got to speak with our winner tonight of the first race, so that's a pretty good accomplishment. That part of everything worked, and uh, looks like our issues have been resolved. So, uh, again, we're going to roll a short piece from the 24 Hours of Lemons, guys, and we'll get reloaded and backed up uh, for the next session as that has already launched. So we'll get fired back up. I want to thank all you guys for tuning in out there and watching us on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitch, and uh, we'll be right back. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? We've got to keep our composure. Hey, everybody. It's Jay and it's Nick, and we are broadcasting from the COVID lockdown bunker. Uh, we can't get out of our houses to go to the office, so we're going to just record this way. I don't know. Hopefully not for the rest of our lives. Now, when you actually are able to travel again, we recommend traveling to a lemons race. And in fact, Arizona has to be one of the top three most scenic places we go. So if you are tired of your local racetrack and you want to get out of the house and do something different, maybe try Arizona. And Arizona is actually super cool because they even have a collection of vintage jets, including they just got this new 1960 Saab 35 Draken for their collection. And we crawled all over this thing. And what is amazing is even Saab airplanes are hoopty. As we always do when we go to an away race, we rent fine vehicles. And this time it was really just the perfect synergy between budget rent a car and General Motors. But of course, Phil is still a practicing automotive journalist, so he got a press card for this thing. They gave him an Avalon TRD, i.e. the only Avalon TRD ever made. So there was an employee there at Indy Motorsports Ranch who had a Chrysler Crossfire, and he was so proud of it that he parked it prominently where all of the racers can see it. Now for us, we really think that, that was a subliminal suggestion that you Lemons people should really be racing more Chrysler Crossfires. Team Car Parts brought their automatic Chevy C4 Corvette and this thing finished 10th overall. Shocking to us, way better than a Corvette has any right to do. Hella sweet and butt terrible. And we had this team called ZZ Flop. They had a BMW and a theme that was loosely based on the rock band ZZ Top. Hell, hell, hell. Okay, this was hella sweet. There were two new teams, one with an automatic four-cylinder Toyota Camry and another one with a five-speed all-track Toyota Previa. So instead of Ford versus Ferrari, now we're talking Camry versus Previa. Uh, you are going to see how that works out shortly. But terrible eyesore racing, the New York Yankees of Lemons Racing. They thought they were going to be the shark and the tiny aquarium. They towed their car all the way out from California to Arizona, and they were just going to eat up the field. That's what they thought. Well, so they stopped at the Grand Canyon on the way. They did a little sightseeing. It got to 20 degrees that night. Not one of those PhD scientists on the team thought, water freezes when it gets cold. I better drain the engine. So they cracked the block, they cracked the head, they showed up at the race, they spent the entire weekend super gluing stuff together, JB welding stuff, pulling in every three laps, pouring water into it, pouring oil into it, and cursing the gods of physics. Team Lowball and their 77 AMC Hornet Sportabout, you know, that's the last year of Hornet production, I believe, why you ruin classic. This team has had endless problems with this car, they always have some issues, not at this race. They ran flawlessly, they had zero black flags, and they won Class C by 55 laps, which is like two hours. They were well clear of second place, which was the Studebaker Avanti. That's right, the Avanti. Look, 
We don't care how much you spend on a Studebaker for lemons. I mean, it's a Studebaker, it's lemons. Spend whatever you want, it's an Avanti, it's awesome. It did not win Class C, but it was not too embarrassing, and frankly, it beat a lot of Porsches, and it's an Avanti! Speaking of beating Porsches, the Parcheesi Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Mark team, which is a great name, they brought their Volvo slash Volkswagen straight six diesel swapped Porsche 924 to this race. And maybe for similarly water related reasons, they cracked their block and head into a million pieces. They JB welded it back together. It did not work so good. You couldn't go anywhere in the paddock this weekend without seeing this Porsche being rope started by somebody. You're like, oh, here comes the Porsche again. It was hell but terrible, but also entertaining. Also hella sweet, old Datsuns. I love old Datsuns. At this race, Judge Brett, it was his birthday this weekend, by the way, too. Sorry, Brett. Judge Brett drove his 510 all the way down from Denver to do this. On the way, his voltage regulator totally blew up, ran about a gazillion amps through his car, popped all the headlights, burned up all the wires, but he made it, he limped down. Meanwhile, another racer, he brought his 510 from Los Angeles for the race. That was in the paddock, and there was a really sweet 210 in the paddock. So when the $500 my as 240Z, which really is a $500 240Z anyway, every time they came in for a black flag, which was not infrequently, their penalty was the classic Datsun car show. The Fast and Curious team, they figured out a way to beat the system. They thought, we've got a Mitsubishi Eclipse, we can do whatever we want to the drivetrain, turbo boost, all the cheaty suspension bits, as long as we keep the automatic transmission and have a convertible. They'll never know. Well, we put them in class B knowing that, well, this could be an experiment that uh, comes out either way. And in fact, it came out the way we thought, which was that the slush box was barfing the fluid out of the filler tube, all raised, creating a huge smoke cloud. They needed a leaf blower just to clear the smoke to see what the problem even was. Did they win class B? No, they did not. Hell is we All right, I believe we are back to racing. And by racing, I mean the practice leading into race two of the night. It's a 20 minute practice. I believe we're about halfway done with it. Uh, some familiar faces from the last session, some new ones. I am Eric Rude, of course. Everything bagel 24 hours of lemons. And with me is Sean Yoder from Nemesis Lab. I'm here, I'm definitely here. I, I would like to point out that we came back into this session. As soon as I loaded in, we saw a Miata, uh, I believe, downshift and blow a motor immediately. A Solstice immediately. rolling maniacally immediately after that. Now there's a Mustang, a Camaro in the wall uh, on the left-hander at the, uh, I'm sorry, the right-hander at the bottom of the corkscrew. Um, people have just uh, gone mad in the little break that we've taken and this could be fun. Let's let's see what unfolds for the second race. I think, yeah, Steph, I think people put their chips down. And of course, with us is Ryan Bauer, the bearded sim racer, who is our producer and host for the evening. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, I think uh, the start of the first race was very exciting, and uh, we saw a lot of contact and uh, also a lot of great racing. So. Uh, some different faces in this as we did have the first come first serve first 62 people to get into the session so we will see some different faces out there tonight uh, in this second race but uh, again we do have 10 minutes left in this warm-up session and then we'll get them gridded up and then uh, we'll be set to go for race number two on the night so uh, I want to thank everybody out there watching tonight for tuning in and joining us and uh, special thanks to top flight computers powering our stream tonight and uh, those of you that watched the first race, hopefully the, our issues are behind us for the rest of the night, but uh, that's part of uh, broadcasting and being at the mercy of technology and the internet. So everybody knows what it's like when your phone doesn't cooperate or your computer doesn't cooperate. So uh, doing the best we can in full lemon style. And as we see the David Carpenter in that beautiful orange 71 street stock kind of getting it sideways there in the, uh, in the kink before the last corner. So uh, oh, I just noticed the uh, front uh, black fender flares on that, guys. Did you guys happen to notice that trim piece on it? It's nice. Excellent. 
Uh, real quick, I wanted to talk about how, uh, you know, we only have 62 slots per race. We had 190 people contact us trying to get in. Um, we give them priority tonight to existing lemons racers, just so we can kind of give dibs to the people who've been maybe missing this the most. Um, but we are making plans already to get everybody who's interested in this, getting them into the funnel, getting them into a uh, virtual race car and sucking properly uh, in front of an internet audience. Uh, just be patient with us. We're totally figuring this thing out as we go. We have no idea what we're doing, which is kind of how the whole thing started in meat space uh, anyway. So uh, we're just kind of carrying that to the virtual world and Savage. figuring it out as we go. Sorry, Savage there that you guys Did saw you, on the screen. Yes. Were you on the, the Camaro and the Mustang yes, there? Yes. Oh, my God. Savage. Let's get, let's get a look at the replay. We rarely do replays in practice, but... As we see the, uh, the do oh, the hip check and then the door, the Mustang and the Camaro going at back at it. That's, uh, yeah, we see him going off there. That was, uh, man, that's a that message was, being I sent, I think, if I've ever seen one. That would be penalty time. a straight time. up none shall pass scenario. Yes. <laughs> Very well put. Very well put. Good hey, Lord. That's, I mean, this is, we're talking about practice. <laughs> you want to talk about practice? Talking about we're talking about game. practice. We're just okay. not even talking about the game. We're I gotta read practice. what's on the side of this thing. Kung, it's, okay, one side says Kung Fu Fighting. And it's got the donut on the hood. Trust me, I work for an automotive YouTube channel. And then on the <laughs> side is the Quarantine Who, Florida, Trump on the right side. So, wow, there's so much going on here on the number 59 for Joseph Blackwell. Shout out to Joseph. Uh, very creative liveries. We get a good look at the number 86 Camaro going by to his left. Uh, Good looking machine there too, guys. So Blackwell, I believe, writes for Donut Media and maybe does the one of their podcasts. Nice guy. Excellent. We see a, a I like that forty eight street stock. Have you guys seen that? It's actually P one on the board right now. Very clean uh, uh, scheme of livery on that. That's a uh, Nathan Schlawin. Shl Shl Schlavine. Schlavine. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. I'm, I'm from Wisconsin. It all makes oh, sense. Okay, okay, gotcha. I'm from Illinois myself, so I totally understand uh, the, the the inappropriate use of uh, uh, genealogy and names there, guys. Sorry about that, but uh, I will butcher everyone's names, and I think that's part of the, the Lemons fashion as well as we see the... Yeah, that's... That's Nathan. I've known you for two weeks. I've talked to you multiple times trying to get this put together, and I didn't know how to pronounce your name until right now. That's that. Yeah, I would have never gotten that right. I, I, I stated his house once. I didn't know how to pronounce it until today. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the level of professionalism you can expect from Lemons Everything Bagel. Fit, I fit right in. I fit right in. I just felt compelled. Felt like the right time. Down to six minutes in warm up, guys. Uh, intensity's ramping up. Uh, see more and more cars out there mixing it up on the track. Getting more and more excited for race number two coming your way. I'm just, just going to win the roll. I'm coming back. <laughs> I, was, I, I predict another Camaro. I'm, I'm bumping back through the field right now looking at liveries, man. I, Christopher Crone wasn't in the first race, but he's got the lemonade Mustang out there now with a bunch of hands all over that lemon lemonade colored car. And that's a really, really good looking livery, man. I, I dig it. I just, let's find something cool to look at. Yeah, they've run, uh, they ran a Geo Metro for years with that paint scheme, and then they cut the Metro up and shoved a BMW uh, M52 in it, which is a, like an E4. Dear sweet lord, what? Uh, and uh, drove it, won a race, and were too terrified to race it ever again. So uh, that car just went to scrap, actually, but they have an E30 that they also race, so uh, Monday veteran racers uh, always run kind of with that same paint scheme. It was cool to see it in, uh, in virtual space also. Nice. Should be a like, Lemons World episode coming out about their Geo Metro in the next few weeks. Excellent. Yeah, as we see the 98 and the 48 with similar liveries there, it's nice. Uh, again, Daniel Knight, our winner from the first race, he's up to P2 on the board from practice uh, within a tenth of a second of... Uh, how do you say Nathan's last name again? Oh, Nathan getting into it with a Mustang and a couple Let other cars. Know. Nathan Schlavine. Schlavine, yeah. Mr. Schlavine and Mr. Knight uh, within a tenth of a second of each other, so that should be exciting. Uh, 
another guy we've got up there uh, close in time as well, Max Lupfer. In a, in a Miata, guys. Wow, that's, I'm really impressed by that. If that, if that. No, that is the Mustang. I was going to say, wow, if that Miata is matching those guys in lap time, uh, we might have an interesting situation going on there. You see the gro front rotors glowing on the Mustang headed down into the Andretti hairpin. Uh, go on board with Max. He's P2 on the board. Going back to the number 42 car of, of James Pancoast right now, and I'm just going to point out that he might not be the fastest car on the track, but judging by the livery, he probably doesn't care. Just going to throw that out there. Yeah. Max Lupfer's trip to the tire wall brought to you by Akron, Ohio in 1973. Home of tire manufacturing and now not at all. <laughs> You're just pulling these out of the air, and they're wonderful. Did you? Did, okay, I have to ask: Are you pulling these out of the air? Oh, I or are they written down? Exactly. No, I mean I'm pulling them out of the air. That's wonderful. You're my you're my new hero, at least for the next 45 minutes. B in the YouTube chat saying, "Sad to see no Alante representation." Me too. Me mm. too. Mm. Shout Someone out to said Judge they Phil want a Ford Pinto that's flame themed, but I, if uh, is the is the um, Solstice still out there with the flames on it? Did he make it back in the second session? Randy Bishon, he's a Class C guy. Yep, he's in there. Yep, there we go. All right, Very we good. don't have a Pinto, but we have a uh, we have a Solstice for you with some reverse flames. Nice. May argue that the Pinto is a better car than a Solstice. Oh, a Wu Tang Clan Miata coming out of the pits right behind Randy. Shout out to Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> the way you said that couldn't have been any better. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to maintain my excitement. I'm big, big method man. Shout out to Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Should mention uh, that race two is brought to you by the all new Chrysler TC by Maserati. Chrysler TC by Maserati. Take that, Cadillac Alante. <laughs> this oh this zinger brought to you by Everything Bagel. I mean, just when you <laughs> thought they couldn't put anything else on a bagel, they proved you wrong. They went and put everything on they it. They went and put even more. The Wu Tang Mustang is, battle. Is that bearing grease on my bagel? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Marine grade. Oh, calamity. Spin from Peter Cicero coming out of the corkscrew. I'm Wu -Tang sorry. Wu Clan ain't Jenkins nothing to spin it. with. Yeah. There you go. Oh, through the Could through the. That, um, Car number 544, uh, Anton Lovett, three-time 24 Hours of Lemon Series champion, driving a Solstice. And the Tetanus the Racing Machine. That's right. PV 544 is his normal whip. Good to see him in uh, virtual space. I think he's totally new to this, so that's excellent. see how he, uh, how he transfers over to online lemons. But uh, a lot of familiar faces from real, um, real lemons. Dave Beland. Uh, in the number 50 car is my neighbor. He lives two blocks away from me as I sit. He's driving in his basement. I know that because I've seen his rig. Good to see Dave out there. If we weren't living in the times we were living in, I would say just drive over there real quick. I know, right? Yeah, yep. totally. <laughs> drive, drive over there real quick, knock on the door and go, hey, how's it yeah. going? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> real it's creepy Eric. line. Hey, it's, it's Eric. All right, we're getting down to it. Oh, as we see him, uh, Jackie Stewart style attacking the curbs, went and hit the uh, the mogul on the apex marker there and through the kink. So uh, David's uh, definitely geared up and getting ready as we're now see we're getting ready to take to the grid, guys, for the uh, starting lineup for grid, for race number two here on the starting grid. I've been watching uh, Robert McDaniel here for McDaniels for a little bit in the Duffman car, the Duffman Miata. You got to love that. Which, uh, what, what car number is that? We'll have to find that one. The number 69. Excellent. Of course. Nice. Yeah, nice. Duffman. Duff beer. Hey, Lemons race. Everyone fights over the numbers 42, 69, and 420. Cannot avoid these things. Oh, there we go. The Duff beer machines are on the starting grid. 
oddly enough, the Miata literally covered with... Game 56, Dana Knight 57, Packard 58, Carl Lynn 59, Tom Lamino, killer of Volkswagen Foxes is 60th, Norman King, killer of Dodge Daytonas is 61, John Samuel, killer of Porsche 944s is starting from the back, that is your grid. Someone amazing, get Eric, some oxygen. Holy amazing, crap, amazing, Eric. Amazing that everything and what more could you ask for as the field comes yep. off the last turn. Nice group of solstices in this field, guys. Uh, one looks like one right-hand drive Miata is uh, starting from the pole as they head down now. Start digging down towards the Andretti hairpin. Should we go to the back of the field? And uh, oh no! As soon as I say that, the 17 solstice off-track drivers left all the way over to pit exit. I don't know whether he recovered from that or not. Yep, looks like he's got a slowdown as he lets some of the guys go back by as they're headed towards turn two. I'm thinking maybe it'd be a good idea in, in a lap or two, maybe go back to the back of the pack, check out some of those Class A cars as they weave through the field. That had to be some pretty amazing action that we missed and maybe not wait because now the field's bunched up and they're they're going to be giving it, basically. Yeah, we're, we're now picking up with the Class A guys. The uh, front Mustang looks like the number 688 of Max Loopfer. Five people into uh, turn five right there at once. Five wide? Oh, sure. Why not? Okay. We're on board with Max Loopfer right now in the 46th position. The first of the looks like the first of the Class A cars. The speed difference between the uh, the Mustangs and the street stocks and everything else is exactly the level of frightening that we needed to be. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, big, big separation there uh, makes for some uh, craziness as we get into some of these higher speed corners. Uh, really, the high speed sections of the track, uh, minus the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew, is where you really see it. As we see, 
really having to cut his way through as we see a, the 51 with some pineapples on board though sticking it in there three wide and there's a huge pile up in the leroy jenkins memorial corkscrew oh around goes the loot for in the mustang he he took out the jetta and then uh basically got himself a little sideways when he made the left hander at the top of the hill there at the corkscrew oh, and man. ended up uh unbalancing the car and not being able to pick it back up you hate to see that but you also love to see that uh, as long as you're not involved in the driving portion of tonight's festivities it provides for some great entertainment well, i think everything's working you now we're back with you guys uh again david bryan leading the way in one of the lower class class c cars again still we have uh looks like adam furla up to the 17th position he is uh cutting his way through all this traffic as well guys so far so good for him p1 in class uh, Warren Van Zan looks like he's uh, in his Jetta, being very patient, working his way through all the solstices here as they head through uh, up towards the Kinkos. We've got solstices around, guys. Huge pileup. Huge pileup back here, guys. Hey, wow. Where uh, right, Actually, right before the Kink, we saw a couple of uh, solstices go around. Looked like a Mustang was trying to get through. Let's go back and see if we can see oh, the... I found it. Yep. I found it. Yep, let's go that's back and check out. The, yeah, let's go back and check out the replay of that. And let's see if hopefully we can pick up the right uh, the right vehicles involved here. Yeah, when did that start? Goodness gracious! Uh, way back in turn two, it looked like uh, got guys going everywhere. Uh, the remember fifty three Jetta was around, right in front of everybody we else. Expect, and, I think. Yep, and then looks like the forty number forty eight machine is going to be involved in this in this pileup, if I remember correctly, too, or right behind him, actually. That's a Talladega Daytona style big one. That's there's like twelve cars involved in that. Yep, looks like uh, trying to get a, a better idea of who was the first one involved in it. Maybe in the entirely wrong zip code now. Apparently, going back thirty seconds is a is a, a lot more than than is required. But yeah, you guys saw it live when it happened. Uh, a huge pile up and it looks like uh, we've got some guys going to pit road looks like a lot of the solstices or uh yeah as you see them going by pit road. we've got a mixture of miatas and solstices on pit road after that huge pile up again david Bryan. go ahead is it solstice i feel yeah, like no. it should be solstice <laughs> yeah i think you're right about that we see the 87 here of david Bryan leading the way guys uh he now has a eight and a half second advantage over Warren Van Nuss, who's running in the P2 in the number 37 Jetta. We've seen a lot of Warren out in the first race, and he's doing well again here in the second race. It should be a matter of time before he gets up to the front. Going back to the Class A cars, we pick up the 48 of Nathan Schlavine. He is all the way up to 14th after starting way back in 53rd. So uh, he's got to be excited uh, about all the cars he's been able to pass so far. And we'll see if his good luck continues. So we see him go off track to kind of avoid some calamities. We see one car coming back on the track in front of everybody else. You see the snake as they head towards the kink and now headed up the hill <laughs> towards the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. As they're going up the hill, there's a Jetta off to the uh, driver's left there of, of Nathan. Nathan's getting a little sideways on entry to the corkscrew. That's uh, not where you want to get a car sideways at all. And uh, have y'all noticed there's a, there's an inordinate amount of dust and dirt and dare I say clag on the racing surface? I wonder. I wonder what could cause that. Maybe maybe half the field going off every turn. <laughs> it's it's an inordinate amount of agricultural excursions. Yes. Yes. Love the uh, shout out to Joe Hutchings. He'll appreciate that comment. Where, uh, we talk a lot about uh, the agricultural racing. Uh, like Road America is a big one for that, for sure. It's just a lot of minimally, well, medium level expense lawnmowers. But why would you need a lawnmower? There's no grass here. Like uh, when we race at Button Willow, you know, somebody drops a tire and then nobody sees the sun for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. Wow. Yeah. It's a haboob. It's a, it's a human. Yes, yes, haboob. It's a human created haboob. Haboob, the uh, sand, the sandstorm of the, uh, the uh, the desert. Yes, the haboob. I'll we'll jump back to uh, Daniel Knight. There is an insane cluster of things happening all at once. Um, yeah. Good call. It's pretty. How far back is Daniel? Daniel's all three classes. 
Daniel is running in eight, yeah, yeah. 18, currently in the 18th position, uh, dealing with two Mustangs oh and a Jetta God. as he goes off the track. <laughs> okay, we're going to have three, is... three wide into the kink, guys. Uh, looks like Daniel's smart here and decides to check up. Uh, yikes. Pretty much exactly what I envisioned this would look like. Uh, yes. this midfield is... might be the best part thing, the part of this. Oh, 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 there's... oh, that just got really bad. Oh, man. Frozen in reverse, though, guys. It looks like he's going to uh, keep moving. That driving's brought to you by Sunflower Seeds to the Gums. Remember, Little League, it sucks. <laughs> wow. The worst part of that. You always get that. That was the sliver. Mustang. That yep. was the Mustang trying to come back on. And I did he even know the Miata was there? No. That's yeah. That Yeah, that was just like, I'm coming back on the track. Oh, God, there's another car a car that had managed to make it out of the county look like coming down the hill there well here's the thing i don't know if everyone watching is having a good time i don't even know whether everyone driving is having a good time but i'm having a good time so oh, yeah. does, does anything else really matter I, no 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 it's, it's this is great i'm just trying to decide where where to direct our attention is there's just so much going on out there uh we see there's uh, fields the entertaining part just as everybody navigates it's where all three classes kind of end up at the same time yep and we see quite the gaggle of cars here we've got uh looks like peter cicero john pickering shane cochran and andrew bana all battling here as we've got five cars under a blanket and looks like four different car classes represented guys so uh not a straight body panel anywhere. No, kudos to you guys for setting this up, you uh, know, multi-class style and the, with the calamity and uh, man, it's it's just been a real good time. So yeah, I don't think there's anything anything anyone bad could say about that. That's for sure. And uh, was we see another Jetta off after the kink? Might just be sitting there enjoying the scenery, watching all the cars go by. It is, it is there is some good views to be had out here today at the uh, WeatherTech Raceway. Yeah, we just had someone in the chat asked if we were uh, throwing any black flags tonight. And I think, honestly, in a 24-minute format, it's just tough to throw the black flags. Um, and and it's, it's, it's more than we can really get done from a production standpoint right now. But I think as this goes on and it morphs into potentially longer and longer races, then we shall shame accordingly. I, I, think, I, I think that yeah. makes sense. Oh, giant, giant impact for one of the Miatas there. Uh, the fastest part of the track headed down towards the Andretti hairpin. Uh, that looked very painful. I think that was William Morris. Yeah, guys, if you want to pick up the number 21 of William Morris, that looks to be a fatal or a uh, terminal contact here. So we'll pick him up and see what happened, guys. Let's see here. Where'd he go? I'm giving it a good rewind right now. Yeah, I had it on him and everything. And then Trying to get to Kern County. We'll get back to you momentarily. He he wrecked so hard on my screen that it went to black. Wow. Yeah, yeah ter it, like he just he wrecked and it went away. He's gone to plaid. He he's gone to plaid. All right, let's see if we can pick up exactly what happened to him, guys. We'll go back here. Should be about thirty seconds by now. There it's we go. Shalvin, by the way, already within fifteen seconds of the lead. Yeah, him and um, Philip. Is it Philip Cotier? Is it Cotier? Couturier. Am I getting that right? So, Couturier. So um, William Morris is he heading down the straightaway towards the Andretti hairpin, loses it, goes onto the pit access road, and, and hits that tire wall and gets all four tires off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Fell into a black hole somewhere in the middle of the Kessel Run, and he's never to be seen again. He's gone. He gone. We pick up the leader now, Warren Van Nuss. <laughs> he gone. He gone. You got an 11-second lead right now uh, over Nathan Schlavin. You pick him up and uh, just kind of we'll click around through the top 10 and let you guys check out these cars. Those 248, the 4898, the, uh, I'm assuming they're teammates that definitely have the similar liveries on those cars. Good-looking machines for Nathan Schlavin and Philip Coutier. Is it Coutier? Is that right? We're... we're we're really close. Yes. We're really close. Like, oh, we're closer two on Phillip's last name than we should ever David be. David Bryan and uh, I'm not sure who the other driver was involved. Looks like the 17 machine, one of the lap down cars. Uh, heavy contact there between a couple of solstices, some friendly fire. 
Uh, looks like Jason Steen in the 249. That's a Mustang. Him and Christopher Chrome, uh, fourth and fifth in class, running in sixth and seventh, respectively. You can see Jason started 50th. He's all the way up to six. That's impressive. 44 cars passed. Uh, wonder how many he had to turn to get by, but we'll uh, maybe at, get a chance to talk to with Jason after the race. Christopher Chrome started 47th up to seventh. Uh, Mr. Norber Norbert Sab Sabatko? He Sabatko. is uh, Sabatko. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Shane Cochran up to uh, ninth in the uh, 86. Yeah. If you know something about Norbert, man, I'm down to hear it. I will tell you that both Norbert and Dave Boland ahead of him raced on in my car at the same race in 2011. Norbert's extremely fast in real life. Oh, and Dude's rocking the Hello Comrade rear bumper, so, you know. That's... Dos Vidania as he passes people? Is that what we're going for? <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> that's great all, the Russian, great run that's for all him. the Russian I have. That's okay. That's great. Running in the top 10, doing a great job. And uh, there's David Bland. We talked. You talked a little bit about David. He was also uh, one of the co-pilots in your car. That's really cool to hear that. That's uh, your. Is that your neighbor? Is that who that is? This is my neighbor, yeah. Nice. Uh, so, long story short... Uh, when I was building a car first, he was looking for a teammate and uh, I was building a car with another guy and uh, Dave wanted to join the team. And we said, cool, it's, you know, $700 for the seat or whatever. It's all in, you know, you show up, and whatever. And he showed up the first day with a check made out for $700, which is the best kind of teammate to have. And it turns out he's also just a really stand up guy and learning, learned how to wrench it about the same time I did. So Dave's oh, that, an awesome that, guy. That's so, awesome. Good dude. I love, yeah. I love to hear Should stories like that. Yeah, yeah, that's great, man. I think that showed uh, up with a check when he said he was going to show up with the check. That's <laughs> exactly. even more impressive. Yeah. Again, let's you tell know, our the, fan, tell our fans watching on social media how they can get involved in our league, guys. And uh, if there's any companies out there that are interested in supporting us, too, uh, tell them how they can get in contact with us to get involved. So uh, you can go to www.isucketracing.com. No, for real, that's the URL that we set up for this. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the iRacing part of this, which is the electric version of uh, electronic version of 24 Hours of Lemons, which is a racing series for $500 cars. Uh, obviously, the $500 car thing is hard to do for this kind of thing, but we're kind of making it as crappy as we can with what we got. Uh, and if you're interested in doing the real racing at the real racetracks with real crappy cars, uh, 24hours11s.com has all that information about registration, schedule, rules, rule books, real short and simple. Everything you need to know to go racing in a crappy car. It's on 24hours11s.com and I suck at racing.com for this. It if y'all don't like mind, I'm going to throw a, a little shout out out to uh, to Nemesis Lab and, and my guys that do everything in their power to help with getting Nemesis Lab up to where it's at. Um, I appreciate everyone at Lemons for letting us get involved. If anyone currently has a rig that they're looking to upgrade or if you're watching this and you want to get involved, we'd love to hear from you at Nemesis Lab. It's www.nemesislab.com. We've been building simulators and been involved in this industry for over 20 years. Um, we've kind of been there, done that, and we love talking to folks who have been in it for a long time or would like to get in it for the first time. So come see us over at nemesislab.com. Thanks so much for letting us get involved with this, Eric. And thank you, Ryan, for jumping in at the last minute. This this has been amazing. Oh, yeah, absolutely, guys. Uh, happy to be here. And, uh, yeah, thank you, you guys, for uh, supporting this as well. It's been a great uh a great time as we get down to less than 10 minutes to go in the race the blinking problems have come back so uh, we're going to do some research between now and next week about running 62 cars and what it takes to get through a full hour broadcast without having these issues but uh, we'll do our best to keep it on cars that are currently in orbit and on the track guys so uh, uh, as we see quite the battle here headed up towards the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew guys yeah there's a pass for the league getting ready to happen it looks like uh Warren Van Noose has been caught by Nation Slavine, and uh, Nathan just rolled on by, like, basically rolled by like that Jetta was not even on the track. <laughs> Warren Van Noose very cleverly understands multi-class racing, however, and is uh, just trying to win his class, and he's got a 43-second buffer to that, so... Uh... Smart racing on his part, knowing he's not going to hold off the Camaro forever. 
Nope. No, not. I mean, there's literally a five second per lap difference between those two cars. There's no reason to play that game. Yeah, quite the battle here yeah, up yeah. here at the top between Nathan and Philip. Uh, the 48 and 98 team cars here, guys. Uh, get a good look at these street stocks as they get it sideways, headed towards the final corner. As we see the leader go off the track a little bit, an amazing recovery and keeps digging and headed forward. I'm going to put even money that they take each other out. Any Anybody want a piece of that? Is it? Am I not supposed to bet on this kind of thing? You, I mean, you no, can, I think we're definitely supposed yeah, to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. If we're not going to hand out black flags, we should definitely make a wager on uh, if the teammates take each other out or not. Uh, definitely. That definitely puts Warren in the catbird seat as he now has looks like about a 15 second advantage over Max running in fourth. So if these we see these two at the front get close to each other, we'll have to keep an eye on it and see what happens. Uh, it looks like it looks like scoring is dying again. Good times. So what do we have? About three or four laps left. Five second a lap difference between the Camaro and the and the Jetta. Correct. So it looks like uh, Max could run him down for that P3 spot. Yep. As we pick up Max, he's in the Mustang running in P4 oh, right now. Yeah, he's right now. He's got quite a bit of front end damage. So we'll have to see if uh, if that's going to affect his lap time. And we'll keep an eye on that. So Nathan Schlavine, your leader. Philip Cotier running in second. Warren Van Nussen, that Jetta that we've been talking about all night, running third as we see the gaggle of cars working their way towards the kink in the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. Max Lupter, Lupfer in fourth. Christopher Cromie up to the fifth position. And then we've got Shane Cochran, Norman King, and Nor Norbert Sabatko in eighth. Daniel Knight in ninth. And John B. Cox running in the tenth position in that 34 street stock, guys. Amazing. Norbert yeah. Sabatko just got passed by Daniel Knight, our our race one winner. I don't know what happened to Daniel. Got him bogged back in the field a little bit tonight. Um, or as, I'm sorry for the second race tonight. But uh, the the Tiger King car is still looking good, man. It's uh, it's he's rolling right now. He he might be in the running for best livery. What what else are you guys really liking? Yeah, that that one the um, the moon the one that has the moon with the uh, mystery science theater the Miata that's pretty nice. I like that one too. Um, that's, those are the Nine two. I like. Oh, whatever that one is with the sweet mustache on the hood. I'm gonna have to get a look at that. oh as we see the track blocked in the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew calamity. <laughs> I saw cars get airborne, so we, we need to oh, recognize there was it. a Wonder Bread sponsored Camaro that I have not seen yet. That was the first time I saw, saw that, too. I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, excellent uh, sponsor in Wonder Bread. Does it have Fig Newtons anywhere on the car? If it oh. does, they win. Is it, on... is it Matt Gain? Let's take a look. No, it's not Matt Gain. I think it is. We'll click through. Wow, more calamity in the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. Looks like it is. Clicking through all the Class A cars till we find them. Oh, there he is on the front straightaway. Hit the front down to half second, by the way. Nice. Go pick that up, yep. Quite the battle going on here. We're going to go on board with P2. Oh, gaggle into the last corner. Carl Lynn, number 57, back in 45th spot. Nice. But, Carl, your car looks good, brother. Carl is totally new to this as well. One of one of many. You know, as I was getting the iRacing IDs, there were a lot of very, very recent ones in there. Um, so lots of people registering just to do this, which is awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. That's the, the For the love of all things Lemons, Get a rear shot of his car so you can see the spoiler on the back of on the on the trunk. Oh, he, he yeah. When when I wake up in the morning, this is uh, this is what uh, <laughs> this is what I do. So I can relate to Carl on that. Wonderful. <laughs> well, the the uh, it's funny that the the session the the piece I played in in between sessions uh, the the, was the first clip was Will Ferrell saying we're not gonna freak out. <laughs> oh, it's so good. All right, let's try this again. See if we can get back to oh, cl more calamity in the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. I should have planned a uh, Leroy Jenkins there. is claiming a lot of sheet metal 
in this race in race number two. I think that's terribly surprising. As we see the, the, the one two, the one two guys there, the teammates Nathan and Philip are now headed through the the uh, Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew. Looks like they're going to make it through okay. Uh, they must have said their prayers last night. Very happy about that. As we have a solstice off in front of them. We can see a strut so tower that, uh, on that Miata. Quite a bit of damage. And it is how people deal with the slower car traffic and faster cars. And these two guys are doing a really great job of it. It's oh, entertaining yeah. as hell to watch. Yep, and they're, work they're, they're working together too. Yeah, they're just barreling through. I mean, it's they're they're doing it cleanly, but they're doing it in a hurry. And uh, Philip has run Nathan down. So the forty-eight and the ninety-eight car. Uh, those guys running one two right now with a commanding lead on the rest of the field. They're sixteen plus seconds up on the rest of the field. So it's uh, it's up to those guys to either bring it home or do as Eric said and take each other out. And right there, I think that did the Miata turn down on Nathan or did Nathan just go, nope, coming through? Right. It looked look like it was uh, both going for the same piece of real estate, but uh, got to clear the way in that situation. So a uh, nice job by those guys to survive that. As you see now, he's going, Nathan going around, Philip going around the outside of another Miata. And these guys are really keeping pace with each other. And it's impressive. They've pulled out to a 19 second advantage on Warren now. And, uh, it's really the class of the field. These two at the front, one, two, Nathan and Philip. We're getting down to like it, guys. The smoke, the haze hanging over the Leroy Jenkins Memorial Corkscrew from something. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I see it now. As it's one, two radiator smoke and yeah. and oil and I mean, there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of people going off there. Oh yeah, Got moved by Philip down the rainy curve there also. One we don't recommend in real life. Yeah, there's the blown up car going onto the pit lane there. Nice. That explains the the, the haze. All right, these guys. I think they're going to be getting. Uh, let's see. It looks like they'll be getting the white flag this time, guys. And uh, we'll be counting it down here. Last lap here for Nathan and Philip running one two. One. Oh, is that my Nyan cat car that blew up? Oh man. Some oh, fire. it is. It's John B. Cox. That blew. He blowed up. Put up like a real Camaro. <laughs> Overheating, I'm assuming, was involved. It wrinkled the front end. Absolutely no cooling whatsoever. Ah. Uh. If anything, Jay, we hope you're watching. And if anything, um, you should be very happy about the number of, of explosions. <laughs> it's, it was, it's, been, it's, it's been interesting. That was his, his main questions about this were, will stuff blow up? Which I didn't think it would, so I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. And also, uh, is there a way we can make it so that you can bolt things onto the car? But, you know, I that, wish, that's unfortunately I wish, we, no. I wish we could do that, but uh, with some of the stuff you can do with the spec maps, you can get pretty creative on the liveries. I think uh, a lot of these people that are new, uh, well, as we see, wow, oh, P2. No. P2 goes off, guys, and the Leroy Jenkins cork Memorial Corkscrew claims another properly, victim. Uh, properly Leroy Jenkins. That's Philip the closest Couture thing we've got to Leroy Jenkins tonight, although that would have made a lot of sense to have that ready because we would have used that a lot tonight, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, coming well, around, yeah, guys, and put them Nathan in the has enough. survived. Uh, he's going to be taking the checkered flag here if he can get through this last corner. Another car coming back towards him. Never a dull moment. And <laughs> another one off on the right. All right, and coming fantastic. home. Yeah, coming home. Your victor tonight in race number two, the forty-eight of Nathan Schlavine. Cars everywhere, but on the actual racing surface. Car coming home seconds. Philip, you see the Wonder Bread Street Stock real close to him there. Take it back here. Look, for, we'll be looking for Warren. Yeah, well, here comes Warren Van Nuss, and he's going to come home with another podium, guys. Uh, he's got to be excited about that. So excited, he won't, so excited he won't want to talk to us, but that's okay. Good run for Warren, running third. <laughs> Max in the Mustang comes home fourth. Here we see Shane with another one of the street stocks, another Class A car at home coming home fifth. Christopher Crommy, there he comes. He's matrixing his way to the finish line. Daniel Knight, our winner of the first race, guys, goes, oh, amazing recovery coming to the second to last corner. He's in the uh, P7 overall, sixth in class. So Warren Van Nuss in that Jetta getting it done, guys. Beating out a lot of these other Class A cars tonight. <laughs> oh, as we see a, an, 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 an reverse donuts. <laughs> unsafe re-entry. Yeah, oh, awesome. 
See if we can pick that up. Yeah, there we a go. Reverse donut, <laughs> and I wanted to make a comment on the Jetta that just proves that 3,700 RPM is really all the RPM you need. It's plenty. You don't <laughs> so need to go any higher than that. Calamity in the last corner. Of these guys coming to the checkered flag. <laughs> Now's the time to let it all hang out. So Norbert Sab Sab Sabatko coming home P2 in his class. Ninth overall, and or eighth overall now. Gains another position towards the end there. Here we see Matthew Gain coming home in the ninth position. Behind him, well, it looks like Norman King's having trouble in the last corner. I don't know if he's out, if he's out of gas or if he uh, had some kind of mechanic failure. He's trying to come home. Currently, you're in tenth position, guys. Uh, doesn't look like he's moving very quickly right now. Trying to make it to the start finish line. I don't Did think he he's going to really run out of gas he, right there. Or he downshifted and blew it up. But I don't think there's anybody behind him to help him out. So it looks like he might be stranded out here as he is. He's still moving. Oh, here comes the car. Are you going to be nice and hit him? Please hit him. Well, here comes the Jetta. Yep. The Jetta. The Jetta looks like he's going to help. Oh, there's someone lining up. Yes, lining we up. have the Jetta. Yep. The Jetta yeah, is, the Jetta is helping out. What a what a courteous driver. I think <laughs> there's there's a three car train right now. So that's Andrew Benna who has been pushing Norman King across the line and Randy Bish on the on the. Uh, the lemon centipede taking it across the oh, uh, man. checkered flag. More perfect time for this song. It just, it it just gets come no better. better. Time. Oh, it man. gets no better. That is some serious give and take camaraderie, cooperation. Daryl Walter would be proud of you guys out there, and uh, just a shout out. Just for the Did good quality. The yeah, I feel the love. I, oh, as we I see a T bone down in the Andretti hairpin, guys. Uh, these guys are. <laughs> It looks like they're out there celebrating, having a good time, as we can go anywhere on the track right now and see different cars sliding. And uh, as I see negative miles per hour for Anton Gurov, I'm afraid to click on his name. He's going negative 14 miles per hour. So exciting. It, it looks like people down in, yeah, in the end of the airplane kind of doing donuts. It's great. Here's a good look at uh, the like, student like they driver. Won, but, but they finished 41st. So. Hey, they finished. They finished. I Absolutely. would be celebrating myself. Randy Bish with that uh, wadded up piece, that scrap heap that's going to go to the scrapyard before uh, he's going to have to. Oh, as we see some more contact. Sloman. Yeah, they're already there. Nice. Oh, my God. There's two Miatas on the front stretch right now that are having a demolition derby. <laughs> This is the best part, actually. The student driver <laughs> car and, and the hot adorned car. All right, got to see the replay of that. Here we go, lining them up. The unexpected yes. best part of the race. Yes. All right, one more time from on board. All right, I considering how much fun this is to watch, I do think that we need Ooh. to. And we could take an unofficial poll right now. Who in the chat and who racing has Wreckfest? And who would like to see a lemons demolition derby in Wreckfest because we can, we can totally have a lot make, of fun commentating we can on that. totally make that happen too guys that would be oh, absolutely be no so much problem fun. to do yeah absolutely see some uh some camaraderie and some uh, rubbing and some racing guys like we saw all night long and uh <laughs> guys and in, in Wreckfest, nice, yeah. we could have some true lemons cars in Wreckfest. yes like, yeah Ooh. oh oh We'd have a lot. We'd have a lot of different stuff to talk about, and I think that uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good idea. I saw somebody posting in the chat earlier tonight about Wreckfest too, so that might not be a bad idea. Uh, maybe get some of our console gamers involved too. Uh, and, you know, that's an option for some people, or even people that uh, may be more of the controller type than the actual simulation type. That's a nice uh, thing about Wreckfest is you can get out there with the steering wheel or with the controller and have a good time. So. Uh, for the more casual guys and gals in the audience that might be interested in mixing it up and doing some racing, that's definitely one way to get involved. The chat literally just exploded with yes, 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 wreck fest, giant yes. exclamation points. Yes, F yes, yeah. yes. Like, yes. People okay. are losing their minds. I want, I think I want that head on be crashes done. between solstice. Judge Phil, yes, we, we want that to happen too. And, uh, head shout on out crashes to between cars and head on crashes between lawnmowers and head on crashes between motorized couches and school buses. And yeah, we can do all that. Shout out to Andrew Bana with two uh, incident points running through the race, apparently. So that's good for him, man. That's uh, impressive. How many laps did these guys turn out there tonight? Looks like uh, 
Looks like 14 laps there for Andrew Shoemaker. Just kind of going through and getting a different idea of what, what everybody ran. Yeah, look, 13 to 14 laps. So an impressive run for Andrew. Congratulations to you, sir. Uh, shout out to everybody watching on Twitch, guys. I uh, want to thank you for tuning in and joining us on Twitch. Uh, all the YouTube faithful from the channel, we saw up to like, I think it was like 80 people hanging out in here before we even went live, like 45 minutes before we went live. So I want to say a special shout out and thank you to all the uh, 24 Hours of Lemons fans on YouTube. Um, guys, I mean, it's just been an exciting event for the first event for the uh, the 24 Hours of Lemons iRacing League. And you can get involved at isuckatracing.com. So uh, anybody out there watching uh, that's enjoying what you're seeing, you can, you can get involved. This is a free league and uh, just a, a lot of fun and fellowship. And uh, hopefully everybody uh, out there watching tonight enjoyed what they saw. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been unexpectedly... I mean, we, we knew it'd be entertaining, but not to this level. So that's really awesome to see. Um, like I said earlier, we have a, a lot of people who want in on this. We're going to figure out a way to get as many people in as we can uh, so that it's not just the same people every week. Uh, although, if we can, whether that's more than one night or whether we change the format, uh, there's been some talk of heat formats with mains. You know, we'll see if that works uh, or how that works. So, uh, yeah, all that stuff's been great. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, everybody who was racing. I hope this gave, gave you guys a bit of a lemons fix that you've been missing. I'd like to go on record as uh, as saying, I'm very sorry, Eric. I'm very sorry, Jay. I'm very sorry, Phil. I'm very sorry, everybody involved on the lemon side. Um, but I'd like to give a shout out to everyone behind the scenes who helped plan this. I think it ran too smoothly, and I'm sorry about that. I really am. I will try to make it run worse next time around. Is, think, is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're joined now by our winner, Nathan Schlavine. Nathan, are you with us up here in the booth? Nathan's almost there. Nathan gave us the bish. Well, he may be off celebrating his victory. That's totally understandable. Well, maybe we can chat with him. We'll just leave him up here in the booth with us. We'll see if anybody else is uh, still around that finished in the top five tonight. Uh, Grab somebody from like 36th place. That's <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That's... Let's see. Uh... 36 is Adam. Nathaniel, Nathaniel Adler. Is he still in there? He's, he finished 11 laps down in 62nd. Uh, but not... he finished. I do not see him. Looks like we've got uh, Andrew, Bish. whoever Burger Lands is. That's the guy that had the sweet mustache on his car. Captain Cardigan. Not sure who that is. Um, uh, Randy oh, Bish oh. in there. Randy Bish, can you hear us? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Oh. We got a, we got a party here now. <laughs> so, Reverse flames for the win. Reverse flames so, for the win. Uh, oh, I thank you. I, I I quite like that. And just like the flames in the real car, they were spray painted on by a drunk man. <laughs> it's perfect. It should be. So we got Nathan Schlevine and Randy Bish in in the booth at the moment. Uh, Nathan, uh, how was the win? How was it driving through the field? Were you uh, puckered the whole time? Absolutely. I definitely screamed like a girl a number of times and Phil was within a second and second and a half for like the second half of the race. So it was it was pretty nerve wracking. There's never a moment where there's not going to be a Miata or a TDI sideways in front of you or into your door. How realistic is that for lemons? It felt very much like lemons. I mean, the street stock is way too nice for lemons. But other than that, just dodging cars, spinning all over the track, I, I had to catch myself a second or two there and run myself that i wasn't actually in a car yeah awesome man and randy how was it in the middle of the field i feel like that's where the fun part is so uh part way through that race i spilled my beverage on myself so i had to change <laughs> shirts and uh well since then i've had an only fans account running and i've made like 40 bucks what so t-shirt contest <laughs> that took me a second and i don't know what only fans is at all so i can't really answer that question oh, i'm gonna let you use context please. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and stop randy from answering that question actually <laughs> so awesome. wait a minute yes. randy randy made more money tonight than we made putting this on something's wrong there something is totally wrong there well, no, you no, better mama always that, told yeah, me yeah, once yeah. you sell your body you know the world's the world's <laughs> 
Hey, Bish, everybody. <laughs> Have a good night, Randy. Oh, my God. The, it's only going downhill from here. Ooh. Once you saw your body cut. Yeah, I love Randy. He's he is he's fantastic. Nathan, congratulations. I will make sure you get your roll of TP. It sounds like you may need it from uh, from cutting through traffic. That's uh, actually fantastic timing on that. <laughs> love to, love to be able to help you out there. You you definitely deserve it and earned it. So congratulations again to your uh, to you and Philip both. Man, you guys were doing a great job of working together and. Uh, Hopefully, you guys both had a great time. You guys were pretty close to each other pretty much the whole run. Anytime you can be running door to door with someone you trust is a blast. And Phil and I do a lot of iRacing together. Uh, I, I was totally expecting him to take me out at some point, but uh, <laughs> Two. managed to escape that, I guess. Right on. Well, again, congratulations uh, on, your, on your finish tonight and your victory. And uh, where'd you end up in the first race? Uh, watching from the sidelines. Uh, oh, I'm glad so you were able to. I'm glad you were able to get involved with the second one. That's uh, that's got to feel good to uh, make you. Until I brought it up, make you forget about missing the first one. Sorry about that, but you know, congratulations on winning the second one. Thanks, thanks. All right, guys, our winner tonight, Nathan Sh Nathan Schlavine, joining us up in the booth. Thank you, Nathan, for uh, the time and joining us. And guys, uh, uh, takeaways from what we see, what we saw out there tonight. Uh, it's definitely been an exciting event, and. Uh, Glad that we could get it together for the fans, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have even more stuff going on next week, and maybe with the possibility of doing something with Wreckfest, and then uh, we, we know we're going to be back again for uh, where are we at next week for uh, for the uh, 24 Hours of Lemons iRacing League here at isuckatracing.com to get involved. I'm Rock Park is next week, same oh, time, same that. that time. Same bat channel. I can't wait for Lime Rock Park. It's just going to be insanity. Cars and insanity. Yep. And that will be. We're running, yeah. Are we running the same cars? Yep. Okay. Cool. Just checking. Just checking. Yep. I we'll mean, make sure people have time to prepare and practice. And wait a minute, oh, yeah. you don't need to practice for this. <laughs> just paint the car. Just show <laughs> up, paint the car. Yeah. Have fun. yeah I want to see. We, let's uh, let's challenge our racers to uh, get as creative as possible with their paint liveries. Uh, they've got a whole week to work on them. So. Um, anybody out there watching that wants to get involved and help out with some liveries, I know some of these uh, look like they take about 30 seconds to put together, but they, uh, they hold a special place in our hearts. So uh, hopefully we'll see some more more good paint jobs next week. Maybe we can get a, a couple of judges involved and maybe even, I think Lime Rock, with it being a, having a short track feel to it compared to what we saw here at WeatherTech Raceway, um, we'll have a lot more opportunities to uh, you know throw some black flags and stuff like that too. I think we're having having our feet wet and a little bit a little bit uh, acclimated now. Uh, that's going to be to our advantage, and uh, the quality of entertainment will definitely increase as we go further along into this. Like we've talked about, we don't know what we're doing, and we're doing our best to uh, make sure you guys can watch that. And uh, I think that's come through tonight, gentlemen. That's right. I think my big takeaway is it's fun to fail publicly just falling down a hill repeatedly in public is is wonderful thanks again for having having me out man i, I we had an absolute blast nemesis is really proud to be involved in this um it's it's a lot of fun and uh i think now it's time for a nyan nyan pop tart and another gin and tonic uh, I'm, I'm gonna tap out you guys and we'll see you next week Awesome. Well, we'll thank everybody uh, for, for tuning in and joining us. Again, this is Ryan Bauer, Bearded Sim Racer. Uh, Eric, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I mean, man, I, that was exactly what I expected. And then what more could you ask for? <laughs> I was great. Uh, I can't, I'm looking forward to next week already. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, thank you for everybody uh, out there watching on Twitch and uh, Facebook and YouTube. We appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, make sure to tell your friends. And again, if you want to get involved, you can go to isuckatracing.com. Uh, the instructions are there on how to find the league and iRacing and all the requirements that we have. And there's not a whole lot of those, except that you show up and you don't whine and you have a good time. So that's really what Lemons is about. And uh, appreciate you guys for getting me involved so we could do this and put this on display for everybody. So um, anything else before we sign out until next week? Oh, beverage. You deserved it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for having me and thank you everybody in chat for tuning in and watching. And it's been a pleasure and uh, we've enjoyed having you and uh, we'll see everybody next week. Again, this is a bearded sim racer and uh, for Eric and Sean, we'll, uh, we're going to see you on the track next week. Thanks for tuning in.
settling like the dew And I have even noticed that the walls are plastered too The bartender stagger and he surely had his share Let's have another drink, we can't go home, it's too darn drunk out there Kelly was a drinking man, he drank from night till morn You can always find him at a bar, a soaking up the corn When closing time would roll around, they'd start to throw him out He'd get a grip up on the bar, and then he'd loudly shout Oh, it's drunk out tonight, it's settling like the dew And I have even noticed that the walls are plastered too The bartender stagger and he surely had his share Let's have another drink, we can't go home It's too darn drunk out there Kelly's wife came a-hunting him with murder in her eye She found him at his usual spot, soaking up the rye She got old Kelly by the arm and started for the door He got a firm grip on the bar and shouted then once more Oh, it's drunk out tonight, it's settling like the dew And I have even noticed that the walls are plastered too The bartender stagger and he surely had his share Let's have another drink, we can't go home, it's too darn drunk out there a little cheer he tried to drink up everything and ended up on beer a cop come over to his automobile for just a little talk says are you figuring on uh, driving home he says sure i'm too drunk to walk oh it's drunk out tonight it's settling like the dew and i have even noticed that the walls are plastered too The bartender stagger and he surely had his share. Let's have another drink, we can't go home, it's too darn drunk out there. Let's have another drink, we can't go home, it's too darn drunk out there.